once again, a huge shout out to all of our supporters over at patreon.com forward slash 878 Survivor FM. All of our $5 supporters, thank you all so, so much. Our $10 supporters, Florida, Big Dog, Shane Murphy, Tank Dazza, Hawks Hammer, and our new member, Mark Godfrey, thank you so, so much. Our $25 supporter, Red Freedom, thank you so much for your ongoing support for the last 13 months, mate. And also a big shout out to all of our growing YouTube members. We've got Kenny Baker, King of Lobar, Cinnamon, Muddy Tracklinks, Jake is Zero Cool, Raymond Normoyle, Matt Z, and Marson P2. All of you are legends who help the show go on each and every week. Thank you all for your support, even just by watching or listening each week to the podcast. And we hope you enjoy this week's show. And we are live in five, four, three, two, one. Boom. And welcome to episode 102 of the Daisy podcast, folks. Lad, how you doing, buddy? I'm I'm doing better, not doing too bad. Went out last night, had a good time, and of course, recovering with the God's Nectar. So, you know, <laughs> but doing really good. How's yourself? Not too bad, mate. Not too bad. Project Lemons, how you doing, mate? Doing too bad, man. I'm keeping it frosty. How about you? <laughs> not too bad at all, mate. Not too bad at all. I um I think um that uh, before we uh, introduce our guest, we'll quickly um uh, announce something um, that Project Lemons will be joining the Daisy Podcast moving forward as Lad's co-host. Um, he ticked pretty much mm-hmm. every box of what we were looking for. Um, he's got modding experience. He he knows PC, but primarily his love is what lad the good old consoles which is something we've been sorely lacking um pretty much the uh, the last person we had was val um brim did a play a bit mm-hmm. but val was um the last uh host that we had who was you know more of a console player and that's yeah over a year ago so it's great oh, to yes. finally be able to add someone who, who who's an integral and well-known part of the um, Daisy console community across both platforms, aren't you, Lemons? Yeah, it's it's awesome, you know, and I'm really glad to have the opportunity to be on here to just um, to bring a light to the community and show off all the stuff that's being done in the console community as well. So awesome. Proud about that. So moving forward, folks, you can expect to hear a lot more about the uh, console side of things when we're talking about, you know, it, it's something we got feedback, um, you know, episodes ago, uh, ages ago, probably even before you were on the show, lad, that we were too PC centric, mm. which is something that I took on board and went, yeah, we fucking are. Um, <laughs> and as we've said many times, there's no doubt more people playing on console than there is um, on PC these days. So, you know, we shouldn't be ignoring such a massive part of the DayZ community. So, you know, we've managed to rectify that and moving forward. It's going to be a whole different vibe to each episode. So congratulations, Project Lemons. Golf clap, everyone. Golf clap. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, indeed. Project on Monday's reverend saying in chat there. <laughs> <laughs> but the man of today's episode, the one, the only, Mr. Red Falcon in the house. How hey. you doing, buddy? Doing good. Excited to be here for this, uh, this celebratory episode. Yeah, I don't know whether celebratory is the right word, but uh, it's it's a pretty ah, big man, episode. It's a it's a pretty We're, big episode, mate. Uh, for it those is. who don't know, today is my final episode as the main host of the podcast. Um, as I've said, you know, if um, there, there's occasions where I'm needed, you know, if Lad can't make it or something like that. Um, I, I may pop in here and there. Um, I know when Mario finally finishes his um, animations framework, that's an episode I will definitely mm-hmm. be coming back for because, um, you know, I just love that guy and the, you know, the the work he's done behind the scenes to help people with so many amazing mods out there. Uh, that's one I wouldn't miss for the world. Uh, but I will be stepping back and Lad is taking over uh, for me as the creative director. It, it's a title I picked, you know, it's a bit of a, a, bit of a homage to um, <laughs> uh, Brian Hicks. Um, he, uh, uh, before he left the um, Daisy uh, game, he was the creative director. So that's why I picked that title for you, mate. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. I did wonder, I was like, creative director? I was like, oh, I'll take it. It's a nice fucking name. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Red Falcon, mate, first question I've got for you. 
the name. Yeah. Tell, tell me about, well, where did your name come from, Red Falcon? So back in the day, um, I served in the uh, U.S. Army in the 82nd Airborne. Oh, that's was... a very famous unit for those who don't know, 82nd Airborne. Yes. So the All-Americans um, made a big name in uh, back in World War II and have continued with fantastic service uh, since then. Uh, jumping out of planes, uh, there was actually the unit that I was in was originally a glider brigade. So mm -hmm. they towed these giant, basically like a, a box car with wings uh, into the combat area, cut it loose, and then hopefully uh, you'd make it to the ground safely. Mate, I honestly anyway. did not even know that gliders were still something used by military forces. I thought that was a tactic that hadn't been used since World War II. That was, it was. It was abandoned then. They brought it, attempts back a few times, but uh, uh, the unit that I was in was historically a glider unit. When I was in, it was just strictly airborne infantry. So the unit that I was in was in the Falcon Brigade, ah. uh, 325th Airborne Infantry Regiment, and I was in the 1st Battalion, which were the Red Falcons. Mm -hmm. And so when I got out, um, I kind of adopted that uh, nickname and it's carried through pretty much with everything that i've done um i had a, an internet company uh that was a red falcon internet working uh back in the in the tech bubble um my future plans i'm i'm one of the things i didn't include in my bio but i'm an accomplished whiskey drinker and an aspiring whiskey distiller <laughs> um and so that company's name is red falcon spirits Nice. And uh, we were working on that pre-COVID, and then it's got put on the shelf for a bit. So that's the origin of the name. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that's the origin of the name, and uh, just carried it through in my gaming. And here we now have uh, you know, the Red Falcon flight system. Yep. Awesome. Now let's that's quickly check this bio so. of yours, mate. <laughs> Red Falcon here. I currently reside in Pacific Northwest region of the United States. I'm a boomer but consider myself more of a Gen Xer. Been doing software development and other technology work for many decades. Along the way, I also spent some time jumping out of perfectly good airplanes for my Uncle Sam, spent 10 years working for <laughs> Mickey Mouse, played in the World Series of Poker eight years, taught martial arts, and travelled some of the world, still more to go. Relevant to Daisy, I spent my first year as a player on Xbox, playing official servers only, then switched to PC. I started dabbling with modding Daisy a couple of years ago and quickly fell down the rabbit hole. One of the things I love about modding DayZ is that there is a fair bit of figure it out yourself. While there are a lot of great getting started resources and a helpful community for the most part, there is no real step-by-step -step guide once you get past the basics. Also, modding allows me to exercise skills that I picked up through life, 3D design, graphic art, software development, and storytelling. So you did a bit of who-flung dung, mate. What's your um, um, specialty? <laughs> Um, I don't know that, that, that I have one. It's whatever I'm focused on at the time. So, mm -hmm. um, I, I think it's probably, probably starts with the storytelling yep. and trying to make sure that, that what I'm, what I'm doing, whether it's, uh, you know, setting up a server, cause I, I help admin several servers, making sure we're telling a good story, not just throwing every mod in the world at it or. No, I, I was um, actually you know, meaning more, what's your martial arts specialty? Oh, oh. Um, so that I taught, yeah, you should have been more specific. Um, I, I taught, um, <laughs> uh, I taught, uh, Umyung Do, which I guess is kind of like that. Um, so that's a combined martial art taught here in the United States. Mm -hmm. Um, and was a third degree head instructor when I stopped teaching. That's go. actually where I'm, I've met, met my wife there too. And, and you played in the World Series of Poker. I did. I was a got into it right about the time that poker started getting popular. Played online and then started going to Vegas and playing in the series. Mm -hmm. And was good enough to fund my trips. Um, obviously, never had any big wins. Uh, otherwise, I'd probably be resting my feet up on a beach somewhere. Yep. But, uh, <laughs> that's good fun. Now, 10 years working for Mickey Mouse. Yes. So yes. I worked for the Walt, the Walt Disney Company, um, working on their basically all the shared internet properties. So I don't know if you're aware, but Disney owns most of everything. So 
ESPN, yeah. um, ESPN, ABC, uh, you know, Marvel was an acquisition when I was there. Lucas was an acquisition when I was there. So I was focused uh, primarily running an org that did central tools for monitoring management, uh, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and had teams here in the Seattle area and in uh, Florida. And I'm guessing you were born in the 60s then, um, if you're saying you consider yourself more of a Gen Xer than a boomer. Yeah, 63. Yep. Oh, so nice. you're, you're 10 years older than me, mate. But fucking, I think you are the first guest who's actually, I oh, know, big grandpa. <laughs> I think big grandpa might have been older yes, than me as big well. Grandpa. Yeah, right. he, he, he it was, yes. Yeah. So it's it's good to see some of us old farts um, still playing around <laughs> with PCs. Um, I, I once had someone say, dude, you know, you got a family, you got a kid, fucking, you know, you shouldn't be playing games anymore. And I said, why? Why not? Why? Fucking love playing games, man. That's my fucking hobby. Some blokes have cars. Some blokes fucking go camping and fishing. And uh, I, I've been out with mates before. Uh, like, like one memorable uh, incident um, I had was uh, when I was back in Kalgoorlie, um, and the missus and I went out with our neighbour. Um, and in Kalgoorlie, for those who don't know, they have the um, the titty bars. Um, topless waitresses um, and we were out the back with our wives um, in the beer garden and he goes right you want to go in the front bar and I was like uh, no uh... Um, you know but that that's what some people do that's their fucking you know their normal thing they you know, go out and they drink and all the rest of it and you know they go you know they've got a missus but they're still prepared to go and um, stare at some fucking chick who's, who's, who's old enough to be their daughter and in some cases granddaughter I was like no nah, man, I don't want to fucking go and stare at another chick's fucking tits. Um, I'm I'm here to fucking have a few beers and a, and a feed, and I've got my missus here. You know, what the fuck, man? But no, I, I love my fucking video games. I, I some of my peers and old army mates are there like, you still play video games? I said, fuck yeah, I love playing them. They're fun. For sure. Yeah, I I remember starting back in the Zork and Adventure days, where you had to use your imagination and yep. typey typey. Yep. Turn left, uh, turn right. Yeah, exactly. Games. <laughs> <laughs> that's all we had back in the day. Mate, I remember <laughs> um, back in the early or early mid-80s, there was a game called Donjon, um, and it was my first um, uh, exploration into, you know, like a Diablo-style game. Uh, mm -hmm. But the, mm. like, I can't even find a reference to it. I just remember the name of it and that it was on the computers at the school. Um, that I went to, and yeah, amazing, absolutely amazing. Uh, good old Commodore sixty four and Atari twenty six hundred, and oh fuck, we're, we're we're yeah, getting into getting into the old school stuff, mate. That it, it is indeed. So you have made some waves with your heli mod, mate. You really, yes. really have. It is, it is just, um, yeah. We we got a comment there, um, in chat. Uh, someone said, "Yeah, they've um, just added Red Falcon. Chris B, that's it. I just added Red Falcon the other day. A man of sick. The dude that made that deserves huge props. Now I just need an RPG seven. <laughs> <laughs> Scale speed is that? Is that a line from Donjon, or is that a line from the game that um, you have been eaten by a Gru? <laughs> that's, that's that's a. Uh, I can't remember if that's Zork or Adventure." But that was one of those no where, uh, yeah, just mysteriously in the game, you were just going to die because of reasons. And so you were eaten by a groove. That would have been annoying as fuck. Yes. That would have been... I, I, that's one thing I don't like is, uh, you know, when, when there's a death that's completely out of your control. Um, you know, you didn't do anything wrong. It just happens randomly. That's just a mean function mm. to put into any game design. But yeah, we're, we're digressing. We're getting off track. The Heli Mod, mate. <laughs> yes. Tell, yes. Talk yes. us through it. Yeah, your inspiration for doing it. and Sure. So it all started. Um, I was a player uh, on a server that had the Helis from the other guy. Night Wolf. Yes. We'll say the other name, Night Wolf, yep. Night Wolf. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and I like the concept of you know helicopters like a lot of people do yes. um and that was um i think a, a, not too long before there was the tribulations with uh with nightwolf and he was pushed out of uh steam mm -hmm. um so i played on him for a while then they were offline for a while um and, and i enjoyed him 
Um, but I was like, it seems like there's, we could be, you know, there's a lot more possibilities here. So I challenged myself and there was enough resources that Nightwolf had made available that I was able to build out the little bird. Um, and we had it just on our servers. And I was pretty excited that I was able to make it work. And so I approached Nightwolf and said, hey, I built this. I was thinking of sharing it. Is it okay? And, of course, he jumped on it and immediately promoted it on his Discord. And so I just put it out there and uh, then went, built out a few others. So I built out the Apache and then the Chinook. And, again, they were all mm -hmm. kind of trying to go to the next level. I want to challenge myself more with figuring this stuff out. Um, and so we ran with those. Of course, Nightwolf was, you know, fully jumping on the, the bandwagon with those. And it was obviously doing more for his mod because it was building yes. out the fleet. Um, so ran with that for a while. Honestly, I didn't have a lot of interactions with him. Uh, he doesn't speak mm -hmm. English, so it was you know going mm -hmm. through Google Translate and uh, didn't always make a lot of sense. So I didn't bother. It's just let me figure it out myself and made some friends yeah. in his Discord. Well, <clears throat> then we had come sometime later. This was uh, fall of last year. There was the issue with his secret mod. Um, the one that you have to pay for was um, had been opened and and put out in public for everyone to use. And so he was focusing more and more on the security, securing the mod, which was securing his income stream. That's fine. People are, you know, if you want to make money at what you're doing, I got no problem with that. Um, but he was not focusing on improving the mod. And so I started thinking, I've got a lot of ideas for things I want to do. Um, let me see if I can build a back end myself, but, you know, just build an entire simulation on the back end myself and started hammering on that and actually was able to leverage uh, uh, Spurgle's uh, source car as my original mm -hmm. test vehicle. So I had my flying janky Spurgle car uh, that flew <laughs> much like a UFO. Um, nice. <laughs> and meantime, the Nightwolf was, he was kind of, it was devolving more and more. And eventually he came out with a scheme that was basically, he said I would have to give him my mods and he was going to be the sole distributor of them. And, uh, you know, that was going to kind of be it. And I said, I'm really not interested in participating in that. Um, in fact, I've been kind of working on my own thing. I think I'm going to release my own mod at some point. Right. Immediately started calling me names and saying I was a thief and stole my helis and blah, blah, blah. And uh, so, and then immediately threatening legal action. And uh, I was taking all that with a grain of salt. Uh, mm -hmm. So I just plowed forward and have my supporters uh, had continued to kind of say, don't listen to them, just keep, you're doing good work, keep it going. And, uh, you know, had the experimental release, eventually put it out in public uh, this year. Uh, suffered through a few DMCA attacks, but all of those were fended off. Um, and then, uh, you know, the kind of the latest transitions are moving from, I was doing releases like every couple of days. Uh, and obviously that wasn't tenable for server owners as they started building a subscribership. No, so uh, did, I did something which seemed logical to me, but a lot of people were like, oh, my God, I've never seen that before, which is I put out a poll and said, hey, server owners, what's the least worst day and time to do a release? Um, because I know there's people all over you know, the world. Some yep. people don't really actively manage their servers during the week. It's just the weekend. But that's the play time. And we came up with a fairly definitive, looked like it was a weekday sometime in the morning time Pacific. Right. Um, so I settled on a release time, and it's Tuesdays at about 8 a.m. Pacific, and just try to focus on if I have content to release, I'll release it then. But I got lots of feedback from people saying, I've never seen a modder do this. Everybody just says, whatever, you get what I give you when I give it to you. I say, no, I'm hmm. here for the... My mod is here for server admins and players. I want to make their experience the best I can. Why not consult with them and try to make it suck less for everybody? No, that's, so, that's a fair point, actually. Yeah, because... Um, sorry, I'll, I'll, I can... No, go ahead. Go ahead. Because <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah, as a modder myself, you know, if I update any of my mods, you know, if I ever work on them, I just upload it regardless of you know, who's using it because it takes, it doesn't take that long to update the server, but obviously there are some cases where that's a bit more difficult. So it's really nice to see you actually sit down, talk with them, be like, look, 
what time works best out for you guys? Because you both recognize, like, it's a mutual thing. You both recognize that they, you know, you need to update your mod, but they need to keep their players happy. So it's really good that you're actually doing that. So I've many fucking props to you, my dude. Thank you. Thank you. So we've, uh, I was packing in quite a bit of content um, in each release. And then um, just the last couple of weeks, it's slowed down a bit. I've got a couple of big bugs that I'm trying to sort out. Plus, uh, fish, fishing season starting up here, so took a weekend. <laughs> uh, and uh, actually, we went up to uh, motored across to Canada and fished in the Canadian waters, but uh, didn't didn't catch anything. We were going after uh, blackmouth salmon. But, did, you pick, uh, no did you pick up any cheap medication while you were there? Isn't that what old people do <laughs> when they go to Canada? Uh, so. <laughs> I mean, that, there's a lot to unpack there. First of all, old people. Um, not so sure about that. Uh, and uh, no, we, we never hit landfall, so we didn't get a chance to get the good codeine or whatever that uh, get up there. Um, so that's, that's kind of the story. In chat, need I both core and the Red Falcon flight system heli to run this on my server? A little bit confused. No. Um, so, yeah, let me, let, me, let me lay that out. So uh, you really only, if you want to use the helis, you, you just need the main mod, just the Red Falcon hel uh, flight system helis. The core mod is specifically for uh, people that want to build out their own helicopter models and run them on their server without the overhead of all my helicopters. See, that's one of the um, things I love that you did, mate. Um, and one of the reasons why I'm such a fan of yours. Um, yeah, you, you've got a similar sort of ethic to um, uh, Dump Grab, where you know, you, you're more in this for the um, philosophical reasons than you are for becoming famous or making money from it. Yeah, you know, you've got a donate link. Um, and I always, you know, I always encourage modders to add a donate link because, you know, some of these models aren't cheap. Um, and, you know, a few bucks here and there, it always helps. But I love the fact that you've got a, a system built in for people to make their own. You know, and they can make their they can make the most garish thing in the world if they want to, but you're not being the gatekeeper of your mod saying you can't do this or you can't do that. That is Correct. just such a that mm -hmm. is such a nice thing to do. Um and I fully expect so that's one thing I've got on the on the backlog is to put together a tutorial for how to uh, how to build out your own helicopter, mm -hmm. um, kind of akin to, like I said, what Spurgle did with the, the source car, um, mm -hmm. do, do a kind of very simplistic helicopter model that I can just give away um, with all of the little bits in there so someone can crawl through it and understand how to build their own. Um, and I do the same thing with the retexturing. So I try to put out a little tutorial with a templated uh, uh, script, uh, Older, and then in some cases, I've got a Photoshop uh, template that folks can use to do their own retexturing. And there's actually been a few folks that have done retextures and then given them to me and asked me, hey, if you like this, would you please include it in the main mod? So we've got a few that have been uh, community developed that I've just rolled into the mod. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. And we hit uh, we hit a milestone this week. We uh, just clocked over a hundred thousand subscribers in uh, Steam I Workshop. Just wow! That. I just saw that because I, I was gonna check to see, um, you know, the stats for your mod. I was very interested myself because I know you've been gaining quite a lot of popularity. So fucking props to you, my dude. That's amazing. Thank you. Thank you. I, I bet it must have been like, like how how do you even describe the feeling of being able to achieve that kind of number? Uh, you know it. It creeps up on you. So it's when you hit like 10,000, I was like, wow, that's mm. just astounding. And then I think when there was a big leap when the big servers uh, put it on. So when uh, mm. Rearmed and uh, Sunnyvale and some of the others uh, add the mod, uh, I saw a big hockey stick of, of growth. And then it was like 30,000. Wow. And then, yeah, one of my, uh, my sidekicks, uh, Said, I think you're going to hit a hundred thousand, and it's like, no way. How, when, when did that happen? Just, it's just unfathomable, and it, it really strikes me when I tell people that aren't gamers uh, what I'm doing. I, the other day, I, I, my wife isn't really tuned into all the details of what I'm doing, other than oh, it's those damn helicopters again. 
Mm -hmm. um, and uh, said, yeah, I've got 100,000 subscribers. And she said, wait, what? Did you say 100? I said, no, 100,000. Oh, my God. <laughs> I think there's uh, about 1,100 people in Discord. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's somebody who, um, you know, I, I got into modding back in 2020. And, you know, at the time, as far as I can recall, there wasn't really anything like helicopters. And it was like, oh, my God, what if, you know, somebody mods helicopters? And people were like, oh, that'll never happen. And then mm -hmm. Expansion came out with their stuff, which was really cool, was really cool. But obviously, at the time when Expansion came out, it was a bit of a, it was a bit of a faff fun to get it all sorted out. And then Nightwolf came along with, you know, yes, yeah, sure, you have to pay for it. But to his credit, the helicopters they function pretty all right, and you know, a lot of players and server owners like the way that he done stuff. So you know, got to give credit where credit is due. But with your mod, sure. got, obviously being completely free. And reaching one hundred thousand, and the big servers are using it. And from what I can see, you know, there's not many, you know, negative comments in regards to it, suggestions and whatnot, which is really great. And you know, I can only assume that you know you kind of take those suggestions on and try and work out whichever best works with the whole thing. But to get to that number, I can't wait for the two hundred thousand subs for you, dude. Seriously. Yeah. No <laughs> kidding. Be fun. Um, uh, so yeah, you can see what uh, Boydie's looking at the uh, mm. the mod. Um, got a number of models that are queued up in, in the hangar being built. I'm just finishing up the Blackhawk now, which uh, Designful over at Rearm has been yes uh, yeah. hammering on me <laughs> to get done. Um, I've got what, uh, what, I've actually... one of the things I've got to interrupt. One of the things that impresses yeah, me ahead. is now. I, so I spent a lot of time with you um, playing um, this um, on with you and a bunch of other people on that. And mm -hmm. yeah, we're, I've got the videos up on the channel as well. Um, we did that on a weekday and that. And it's not an easy mod to, to, to as in the, the, the helicopters are not easy to fly. They take some skill. I'm yeah. impressed that you've still got a four star rating that people are seeing past the fact that you have made it a bit more challenging, which I am such a fan of, that you know, Heli mm. should not be something that any man... This isn't a game um, you know, where everyone needs to be able to fly a Heli. You know, it, this is something... Daisy's a game where you know, if you're not good at something, you're just not good. You've got to you know, get good. Um, and you've got a public server out there. But I'm impressed that on Steam, you've got a four-star rating still, despite the fact that I'm certain there are some people who are butthurt over the fact that they're not as easy to fly as some other mods and that, that they take a bit more skill. So well done, Daisy community on that, actually. That's, that impresses me. That um, gives me a bit of hope <laughs> because, yeah, I, I was expecting to see it kind of panned um, a bit when I came in here. But no, that's not the case, and I'm really, really happy for that. Oh, I God. see. Can we? Can you please make say... that chopper? <laughs> <laughs> so, so there, there's actually a, a little story behind that one. So, uh, that came to me from Jericho, who's one of the uh, one of my supporters in Discord. Yep. And it was it was I think when I got my first DMCA, and they actually took the. It was still an experimental stage, so I was only had it available to my uh, the, what I call my falconers, which is my my uh, uh, patrons in Discord. And uh, so it was so it was down. It was going to be down for two weeks. I was confident it was going to come back up, but it was just very disheartening. Um, and so I kind of reached out to the community and was just saying, "Hey, I'm, you know, just taking a little bit of a breath. This has got me down a bit." And so. Jericho did that uh, little was it like the refrigerator drawing that your your four year old would do, um, yep. and it, it was just something that lifted my spirits. So so I added it to the uh, to the mod. Uh, that's yeah, no, it's cool, mod. man. It's cool, and yeah, that's a, again. That's one of the things I like about you is you're very, um, yeah, you, you're doing this because there was a need for it. Um, yes. Yeah, you've you got a bit of, al that's the word I was looking for, altruism about you. And that's something that, you know, that means a lot to me um, because I think, you know, I I've said it a number of times, um, 
you know, we need to be doing more for this game as well. Um, BI have built us a great base engine, um, <clears throat> and it's up to <laughs> us to make the most of it. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, so it's just been a lot of fun. And I think I told you this before when I've had people saying, why do you, you're doing this for free? You could make a lot of money and what are you doing? And it's more like, you know, I play, in fact, I'm, I'm with the rest of the, the tide of people going back to playing vanilla. Um, so when I'm playing, I'm back on a straight vanilla server uh, and having a lot of fun there. But also how I enjoy the game is building mods and uh, running, you know, adminning servers and, and that yep. whole side of it. So for me, that's just part of the play as well. What, what do you well, think of this it, yeah. uh, Project Lemons? Yeah, from a console standpoint, it's really interesting to see this stuff. Because for a lot of people, this is completely new to them. A lot of people on console have never even seen anything close to this before. And although they aren't able to do it themselves, see some of the amazing stuff that's being done in the community and that can maybe give them that nudge that they are looking for to move over to PC, you know. Because I know for some people, they want to experience stuff like this. They want to try that out. And it's awesome to see that some of these console people are making that jump over to PC to just try out even more of the community and, and see what they're doing. So, yep. I mean, any, anything that's... uh. Anything that's not just base cars is a great for console. <laughs> yes. Any of that? Yes. That is true. Now, where are you, where are you at with the question. flight helmet? Sorry, I'll, 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 I'm going to interject again while I remember because yeah. I'm a boomer and I'll bloody forget if I don't ask it while it's on the top of my head. <laughs> where, where are we at with the flight helmet um, adding in-game HUD? Oh, yeah. So that was at, at, at your suggestion. Um I don't I, think it was my suggestion. I think it was someone was it, in the chat was, when we were. It was either streaming. you or maybe maybe it was Dumpgra. Somebody it, it who might was... have been. It might have been Dumpgra. I don't know. It was someone who was mm. in the in the stream. They said it in chat, and I was like, "Fucking, that is a brilliant idea." Because the flight helmet, as everyone knows, it's purely a cosmetic item, but to actually allow it to give you extra heads up display. By choosing to wear it, you know, you could just keep it in the inventory of the helicopter, stick it on when you're flying, um, and that is just awesome. So where are you at with that? So that's that's actually done and dusted. So we wow. had, it's, uh, so you can see, I, I, the screenshot you're on right now is the flight suit that I added, and that has a helmet. Um, so if you're wearing that helmet or any of the vanilla flight helmets, and I think there's two variations. Um, there's an option where you can make it so that the heads up display only shows when you're wearing the helmet. Yep. Um, and so that's something that by default it's off, but um, server admins can turn it on uh, if they like. Um, and so that adds that, that additional element of you have to have this piece to. So to what get does it actually add to piece. the display for you? It just, it, if you don't have it, you don't get the heads up display at all. You just have uh, helicopter instruments. Yep. Right. And then in the future, if uh, if I ever get around to doing things like adding weapons uh, to things like the Apache, uh, the mm -hmm. the helmet would also give you that additional, uh, like the the in the heads up display, the oh, targeting nice. icons and things like that. Oh, and yeah. That's fucking. That's so cool. Though. That's that's, bro. I'm re. <laughs> <laughs> I want that. I want. I want. I want to use that. <laughs> I want. To, I do want to see how far you can go with it because having something like that will not only you know be something that other people can you know possibly learn to implement in a mm -hmm. different fashion, but it pushes modding to another extent, and it's always always really really cool. And if you do get the weapons on the Apache working, mate, that's gonna be a fucking oh, that's gonna sell the mod right there. Like, yeah, sure, it's all good to get the, uh, you know, the transport helicopters and whatnot, you and your buddies, you go and loot and that. But it would be absolutely brilliant if you could actually use your Apache to take down the, the hordes of infected before landing. That would be absolutely brilliant. I'm also just imagining, along with what Darkwing just said in chat as well, um, you know, you're sitting in your base and you've got, you know, um, you're using a certain mod and you've got like tier three concrete walls and you see this <laughs> Apache just rides up over the horizon and just staring at you. You're like, oh, fuck. fuck. 
Got a qu- I do have a quick question, uh, Dale. Yeah. Uh, so Dale has asked in chat, might have been asked before I came in, but is there any chance you'll take on boats at some point? You have ah. mentioned this. Yes, I have. Funny, you should. You should actually. When I was up fishing last weekend, I was taking lots of notes um, because part of uh, the important thing, other than a boat, is a car on water that goes to and fro. It's how do you make it immersive? So looking at if the boat is still, there should be some motion of the ocean, as it were. Mm-hmm. So some yeah. some of that rocking and rolling. Um, so definitely on the like agenda. Me, I bed. <laughs> That's that just getting into bed. I, I'm not talking about any sex or anything. <laughs> Fuck's sake. Uh, I, I, I'm happy to hear that. Um, <laughs> good for you. <laughs> Dear old, you trained a thought, haven't I? Yes. Um, so I do have some models lined up um, that I've collected along the way, and... Uh, uh, we'll definitely be looking at doing boats um, here probably next. Uh, once I get, uh, I think, past a couple of the the, the last big uh, challenges I have with helis, um, we'll uh, slow down a little bit on those. They're going to keep moving, but uh, mm-hmm. then put boats together, and then uh, not sure what else from there. Now, what's the deal with the blue, yellow, and red crates? Ah, so this was a... This was kind of a funny thing when you when when you get into doing a lot of modding, I think you lose some of the player perspective. So the first thing that a lot of people would ask me was, "How many slots does that model have? How you know how much storage?" And then just thinking from a modding perspective, that is the least complicated thing to change. Why is yeah. that? Why do I care about that? And well, because players care about that. Um, and there wasn't an easy way that I was able to figure out to make it. So that server owners through a JSON config could change the slot count on a vehicle. It's fixed mm-hmm. in the config CPP. And I didn't want people to be repacking and do, doing all that nonsense. So what I did was I'd already introduced the concept of the flight crate back in the old days for the Chinook as a way to right. build out, add more storage, because there's only 1,000 slots available on a vehicle uh, in base. Is that the maximum so a vehicle I, can have in the coding of DayZ? That, that is correct. Okay. Um, you can put more, and it'll claim it has more, but you'll only ever see a 1,000 slots. Right. Um, so what I did was I said, well, okay, so we're going to have what Red Falcon thinks the helicopter should have for storage. And I just base it on, for example, the R-22 has no storage. If you look at it, there is no, there's no place to put anything. But what I did was I created three variants of this flight case. The uh, blue one is 250 slots. The yellow is 500. The red is 1,000. And then made all the helis have a, an attachment point to add a crate to it. And I also made it so that if server owners want to use this to control the how much storage there is, they can actually... Um, make it so the crate is not removable um, and the cargo is not visible. So if they want to just have it spawn in at the trader with a yellow storage crate on it to give it 500 storage and make it so you can't remove that and use it for your base, you can only use it in the helicopter, that you could Mm -hmm. set that up. Or Mm -hmm. if you just want to use them as giant storage or you want to use them for King of the Hill or care packages or something where there's a storage container and the, the players get to keep them and use them in their base, you could do that as well. Right. That's such a unique perspective, a unique idea to actually be able to implement something like that. I've, um, cause I know with like clothing mods, you can get like different attachments to expand mm. the inventory, so to speak, you know, with their own little, own little inventory. So it's, it's really cool that you, you have thought of that for the helicopters to really make it more worth it because from at least my perspective you know if you do get a helicopter that's got you know a fair bit of storage you're still offering an up a path of upgradability for that 
Um, you know, getting a helicopter is still not end game. You can still build it up. You can still make it better. So that's really, really cool that you've decided to go through that route. And then one of the pieces that, um, that I've implemented the beginnings of is it's in the realm of making it so that maintaining the helicopter is challenging too. So I've got the mm -hmm. concept of hydraulics in there. There's the hydraulic hoses that are required. Um, mm -hmm. But I haven't implemented the adding hydraulic fluid and then the concept of if the hydraulic system gets hit by gunfire, it starts leaking. Uh, you know, eventually it makes the heli unflyable that you you slowly lose hydraulic fluid, so you need to replenish it. Um, right. Making things like there's a wiring harness that's needed, making that craftable. So you get like some duct tape and and three metal wires, and you can craft it into a wiring harness. Um, so if that gets damaged on your heli, it can be removed. Right. Okay. With the Chinook and the and the Osprey, I'm not 100% on the Osprey, but the Chinook, I believe, can carry a vehicle inside the back of it if it's stripped of all the seats and the rest of it. Um, that, that, is, that is true. Um, so one of the things that I had, I'd actually started working on with the old mod, was making it so that you could put a vehicle in the back. Awesome. And you, 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 you knew where I was going with this. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So... Really, the the only way that that's going to work effectively, and I've done some initial tests, is using a what I call a loader. So you'll pull the vehicle up to the back of the to the loading ramp. You'll go inside, press a load button in the helicopter, and it'll just snap it in to the heli and mm -hmm. attach it. And then the unload is the same way. Once the heli's landed, you can press unload, and it just moves it to the back. Uh, behind Can the players be inside the vehicle while that process happens? No. No, okay. No. And, and one of the, I initially tried the old, what if I could just drive an Ada up here? Because that'll fit. And then I found out, one, I can drive it on, but I can't get out because the doors won't yep. open. Yep. Um, and then even if you can get it in there, as soon as you try to take off, because they're not yeah, attached, just... exactly, they start damaging each other and then yep. both blow up. Okay. So. It's but essentially the limitations just, yeah. of the game. It's unfortunate because that would have been so cool yeah. to be able to drive mm. in and then, you know, get out. But understandable, completely understandable that the, the game limits what you can do in that aspect. Yeah. But I might be able to make up the difference with some little animations or something where it looks like you put a tow cable on the, the car and it, it pulls it up into the helicopter or something like that rather than just poof, it's in. So we'll see. Yeah. But that's definitely... For the Chinook, I think for the there was a couple other big helis. The MI seventeen maybe, I think was one that I was gonna look at seeing if I could carve some seats out and put that in. And the Osprey uh, definitely has room for it, so and the Osprey is gonna be I'm I'm saving that one. That's gonna be a challenge because I'm gonna have to write a new simulation for it because it'll fly like a helicopter to you're going forward a certain speed and then it flies like a plane. Yeah. Right. Basically it has so um, be... uh, vertical rotors for the lift off. Correct. And then once you're in the air, those rotors will start to angle forward um, to give it the forward pr uh, propulsion. With the Osprey. And at, at that, yeah, that's correct. And then at that point you're getting lift from the wings and not mm -hmm. from the, uh, the rotors. They're acting as just regular uh, propellers. And mm -hmm. uh, so that changes, obviously, the flight characteristics quite a bit. Mm -hmm. So in terms of the flight system that you have that you have made, and I know we were just talking about the Osprey, but have mm -hmm. you also thought about, like, actual dedicated planes or anything like that? I know it would be pretty weird to do, considering Daisy Vanilla's only got, what, like, <laughs> like two, two F right yeah if you count Belota. yeah yeah so i thought about that uh, obviously there's been a lot of people that push for that and they immediately want to go to like mm. these big c-130s or things like that i think if i do that yeah if i do that I'll, it'll just be like there's a little i haven't looked at what the soviet era fixed wing like small aircraft are but something like a little cessna uh, a two-seater, four-seater, something like that, that you could land on a road. Um, mm -hmm. But certainly, and certainly no jets. That that No. 
Okay, so <laughs> for, for people um, out there who are looking at, you know, there's a few Heli mods now. You know, obviously there's Night Wolves, there's the expansion one, there's yours. I'm unsure if there's any others, and I apologise if there is. Mm. I haven't mentioned them. But what differentiates? <laughs> I've got, I know a few things that you've done, um, but what differentiates you from a lot of the other mods out there? What what else does uh, this uh, package involve? I, I think probably the biggest thing is the thing that people find challenging when they fly it, and it's the fact that the collective input, and for those not familiar with how helicopters work, um, the, your, the collective control, you can really think of like a throttle. That it's, that, mm -hmm. That's not a correct, technically a correct uh, comparison, but for, for the man on the street, it's like a throttle. So when you apply more collective, it's giving you more lift. When you apply less collective, you're getting less lift. On the other um, helicopter mods, they're, they're doing it much like the car does with a throttle, where you push uh, W and it, it gives you more throttle, but it's really just a binary. It's on or it's off. So you do a lot of key tapping. And then the same thing with the braking, where you're hitting the S key and it's just you're just kind of tapping it like tapping the brakes. So I wanted to make it a little bit more um, fluid. So what I did was introduce the variable collective, and that's that for those that have looked at the heads up display, there's a, a bar graph on the right um, that goes um, up and down, and you can use either the, the shift key um, to increase it by 5% or the Z key to decrease it by 5%, or like I like to use the scroll wheel on your mouse or your trackball, um, and so you can scroll it up and down. So that gives you more lift, less lift. And that's needed when you take off. Obviously, you're going to create more lift. Uh, so you go up on the collective. Then you level out, drop it to middle. Then you want to go start going forward. Well, as you are translating, tipping forward, you're going to need more lift to keep it uh, from falling. So you have to give it a little bit more collective. So it starts to introduce this finesse piece, which is the one that people have the most difficulty with because when they're trying to land they just I want to go down so they drop the collective significantly and before they know it they're falling faster than they're able to recover okay. um, so it becomes that's where the that practice and that's why I put up that heli test server was so people could practice about an hour or two and people seem to get pretty proficient at it mm -hmm. so that's really I think when you get down to the nuts and bolts of it that's the big difference um, I think one of the things that, if you think about it in a meta way, um, is that uh, I'm still at a point where I'm one person doing the development. Uh, I can make the decisions unilaterally, and I really like to get input from people. And if I hear a good idea, I'll figure out a way to implement it, and I'll get it rolled into the mod. And I'm still releasing weekly. I'm able to add a lot of things relatively quickly, where... The other ones, you've got, you know, expansion is a, is a big team, and they've got a lot of ground to cover. And so they're doing, you know, they're doing good work and doing the best they can, but that's a, they're, they don't have the horsepower to be able to innovate on a specific piece like a helicopter. Now, you mentioned expansion. Right. I want to quickly uh, yeah. touch on one thing as well. Um, so this is an indication of what some people are like in this community, folks. Have a look uh, at the uh, comment, uh, this paragraph here. Huge shout out to Designful, Danny Doom, Gumby, um, and Zero, uh, or sorry, Six Pack uh, for their model donations. And now this next line, Jacob Mango for his tips around the inner workings of DayZ. Jacob Mango is a guy, he's, he's part of our team behind the scene. He's stepping away a bit from DayZ now for his own reasons. Um, but mm -hmm. this is a guy who was one of the instrumental people in making the expansion Helimod. Yet he's helping Red Falcon. Why would he yeah. do that? Because he's a decent person, you don't need to. You don't need to. You know, yeah, altruism. Altruism. I love. I love seeing it, and I love that there are you know people out there. Um, you know, Mario's another one um, who you know helps so many people with their mods behind the scenes and stuff like that. I just love seeing people collaborate like this. I love seeing it. It makes me so fucking happy. And that was. Uh... Yeah, uh, Jacob Mango reached out to me. Um, I think when I was when it, it was really starting to take off, but he took a look at the code and said, 
you know, here's a few hints. And he said, I, you know, I'm obviously not going to give you the whole store because we're quote unquote competitors, even though that is not yeah. a really a good term to use. Um, and, and just gave me some breadcrumbs and a few pointers. Um, also, my intent was to make this as compatible as possible with all mods. And that includes expansion and expansion mm -hmm. helis. You know, I don't want to make it so you have to choose. And um, that was, we ran into a few bugs that uh, a Lieutenant Master over at, uh, on the expansion team yep, not uh, reached block. out to me and said, yeah, we've got a, I, I'm looking at your code. I'm seeing there's a conflict here. If you change this, I think it'll fix it. And we work back and forth and we're able to resolve it. Same thing was I ran into something where there was an issue on the expansion side that they were aware of, um, but had kind of put it farther down the list. And they said, well, this is causing a conflict. Okay, we'll get that taken care of. And within a couple of days, it was in their experimental branch. Yeah. So, the, the, you know, it's been great working with those guys, mm -hmm. even though we're quote unquote competitors. <laughs> it's no, a, it's neither, a healthy competition, you in for, But the, neither of you are in it for the money. And that's the big difference. Correct. Mm. Absolutely, absolutely. It, it's all about the players and, and the people using our mods. Without that, there, there's no point in we're just building stuff for ourselves, and that's going to not last very long. Now, I do want you to explain uh, this paragraph. Repacking or reposting of this mod to the Steam Workshop is not allowed. Don't even bother asking because the answer will always be no, plus you'll get a lecture about the pointlessness of endless server repacks. Explain. <laughs> wow. Okay, that that scraping sound you're hearing is me dragging my soapbox out to jump up on top of. So, so every as we all know, and you brought up this before, there's this uh, myth that oh, if you reduce the number of mods on your server by repacking them, it somehow makes makes it more performant, or it makes people think oh. This server has less mods, except for this one five gig mod uh, that's going to take me forever to download. So <clears throat> there's a couple of angles for this. Um, uh, and actually, Iraq has had probably the best bulleted list that I saw that I think I stole from him and put somewhere else with his permission, of course. Um, but it was, uh, you know, one, it doesn't increase your performance. Please stop. Uh, two, you are doing the software equivalent of forking my code. So you're taking my code, you're putting it in your own release. If I release fixes, which I do regularly, unless you are diligent, you are going to miss out. And then you're going to have your players complaining about my crappy mod because you're running an old version of it. And, and that, that is, he smirches my reputation. And, and I don't want to have that. Um, and you're making people, players, re-download the same things over and over and over. Yeah. Ah, he's got a refill. Okay, so yeah, so then, then a mod that 100,000 people have, you're going to repack it on your server, and you're going to make them re-download it again. For why? For no good reason. Exactly. It's, it's pointless. And I, <laughs> the amount of times I've seen on the modders' Discord... Or people people talking about repacking and the benefits or the cons and that, and you can just tell, like just you can hear the collective groan of, <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake, where you have to explain to another person why repacking is just pointless. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. Now, obviously, there are mods out there which say yes, you can repack it. Go ahead, it's fine. But you'll usually find that they're like maybe a config type mod or something like that. It changes Correct. something very small, and that's perfectly. Oh my fucking god! Oh, <laughs> we don't need to see behind the scenes. <laughs> but, and it's like uh, that. I'm sorry, that completely threw me off. <laughs> for for people for people on Spotify. For people on Spotify, Boydie's got a green screen uh, and he went off to go make a cup of tea and he, <laughs> he, just fucking he took it down and all you saw was his neck below and it was like, oh God, oh no, oh God. <laughs> but like <sighs> repacking. Yes. Pointless. Don't fucking do it. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> And actually, there's only been, so I, I, me and a few of my 
my helpers um, regularly look to see if there are any repacks. And I've only had a few instances, and there were people that I think they were mainly in Asia, so they probably didn't read the description and didn't know. Yes. And just thought, oh, I should repack everything. So as soon as I let them know, hey, you need to you need to remediate this. You can't repack it. Just use my mod if you want. Um, mm -hmm. They immediately took them back down. So I haven't had any right, well, that's good. any battles with that, which is, I was impressed. I figured that was going to just be a mountain of people to chase down as they stop mm -hmm. repacking. Well, that's it, yeah. Uh, one interesting question I had for you, this is uh, backpedaling a bit, but because yeah. you've begun to get a lot of traction on your mod, have you thought of expanding your team to more people to try and get more stuff covered? I, I have, and that's a big leap. So um, I have the mechanism set up to where I could do that, where I, I'm currently using GitHub to browse the stuff. I'm actually right. you know, putting together the pipeline to be able to just publish on on merge and commit, um, but and, and also managing engineering teams in real life. That's a that's a pretty simple scenario. But I think it's finding the right people and the people that I trust uh, with kind of my baby to come in and be able to take pieces of it. Uh, and hopefully, I think I've documented everything in code enough to where people can figure stuff out. But yeah, that is that that's probably my next big step is to actually. Uh, bring in a team and that that's a great point just kind of like i said it's a it's a it's a leap of faith and i, I have to get myself mm -hmm. there and the one issue too is once you start to really get up in popularity there's a big pressure put on you by the community to keep putting out new stuff you know and it's very stressful for some people but i know there are some people in the community who choose to still just go solo no team and stuff but yes it is a big pressure to continue and keep putting out more you know so Having that crutch to lean on, like of the rest of your team, is always really nice. Right, and I, I've heard some horror stories too of things that in in a business world it's it's handled contractually, but with uh, with kind of a loose modding team, it's where someone claims, "Oh, I brought this model in, so I'm taking it with me when I leave," or "I wrote this code and you can't have it now." Where then I wind up having to have a fairly uh, rigid, "Hey, you have to." agree to this or essentially sign this contract saying all the work you do goes into the mod and yes. the mod won't be monetized other than through donations. And, you know, I retain full ownership in, unless I hand it off to someone else. Whenever, whenever something's of a casual do. nature, there's always complications. Like even look at the, with the podcast, you know, it, it's, um, I've assumed all financial responsibility for it. I cover all the debts um, and everything. You know, whenever there's costs to be incurred, um, pretty much to my memory, I may be wrong, but I don't think I've ever asked anyone to contribute to it because it, it's unfair. It's a casual thing that we do. Um, but, you know, do we go to that next step and, you know, incorporate and all the rest of it? I really don't want to have to do that. I just want to keep it nice and casual mm -hmm. and, um, it it has its own inherent issues, uh, but yes. it, it's it's an awkward um, it's an awkward point uh, when you you know look at look at um, the troubles expansion had you know with so many people involved in it. We're going to be talking about something similar um, later on in the um, podcast as well. But it, yeah, it's sometimes there's a, there's a simplicity to just being the sole operator, isn't there, Falcon? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um... And that, I, you know, as we were talking about this, I was thinking one of the one of the things I learned in in contract negotiation and putting together uh, kind of an inception contract with people you're going to work with is plan how you're going to break up. So it's kind of like when you're when you're proposing, also put together the plan for how you're going to get divorced, because you want to plan that when everybody's in a happy place and not when everybody's grumpy at each other. Yes. That's start one thing pointing been, fingers and it gets in the <laughs> yeah. Well, that's one thing I've been lucky waters. with. Yeah, you know, I've I've had some amazing people work with me. Um, that you know we've had no drama queens, nothing like that. It's just been um, pretty much just good vibes. Just people who love Daisy and want to you know try to have one little place to showcase it. And I love knowing that there's modders out there um, that are creating little communities and all the rest of it, where it's all just about. Um, advancing Daisy, 
um, and people like, mm-hmm. you know, Jacob reaching out to you. I know Dewan does a lot of stuff for people. Dumpgrass always helping people. Uh, mm-hmm. there's, there's, you know, Scale Speed is always helping people over on the console, console side of things and Don Simbley and um, who else is there, Lemons, on the console side? Ooh, um... Well, Goblin. Uh, that's yep, a big sorry, one. Sorry, Half Goblin, yep. Yes, of course. Goblin and uh, Peasant and a few people. Yeah, and it, make, it makes me happy to see that. Um, so many people out there. Um, and, you know, even on the uh, content creator side of it, you know, one person who you know, I'm just so fucking impressed with, Bob Lake, is Happy Bombs. He's just doing mm. so oh, much yes. for the community with his servers. Um, you know, with his uh, and I'm so happy to see his stream just growing and growing and growing. And um, I, I think he's going to be massive. I think he's going to be, you know, one thousand plus viewers, um, not too far from the future. Um, uh, and not needing so, raids to do that either, because the guy's just he's all heart, um, and so professional as well. Hmm. One thing I'm curious about too is if he'll make the choice to tap into the console community because like you were saying there's a lot of players that play on console and there's a it's booming there's so many people that are like across playstation xbox there's so many people and it's they have like limitless opportunities but it's just getting the right person to actually organize something like that and have the event and yeah. also the fact that we're very limited with our staffing tools like we can't just teleport to players we can't use like the um we can't really? no clip any of that stuff yeah we, if we want to teleport, it's really janky. We actually have to go into the spawnable types or the uh, player spawns config. Actually have to set <laughs> a specific spawn, restart the server, have you spawn there, and then change it back to the default. Like, it's not it's not worth it. You'd just be better off driving there. <laughs> a lot of servers will just have a specific car, and they just call it the admin car. Like, the white ADA, that's the admin car. So just watch out, because the admin's usually in that one. Because the, you can't do any of that stuff on console. There's no tools really just like one of the the other players is that not something Oof. that you know I, I know you probably wouldn't be able to do it actually on the console itself but is that not something that someone could make a a, a mod or an app for with um you could have on your pc and use that to it's hard there's a few people like laws kill feed um or eden law he does a good job with that and he's made a bot that does a lot of staffing so it makes everything really straightforward and it'll send you messages about build logs or if players are doing anything that may be a bit shady. But there's nothing that we can really do in regards to actual physical moderation. So we can't like modify a player's inventories. We can't uh, okay, look at we, what they have. We need have. to hold this thought. I think mm. this is a um, an episode um, uh, idea for you for the future, lad, um, to talk more about um, the console, the lack of admin tools. That's genuinely surprised me i i wasn't aware that they had so little control um yeah that's reminds us of the alpha days yeah well <laughs> yeah 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 and i'm, so, I'm surprised yeah. that there's no um you know interface that you could you know, have a laptop next to you or or mm. whatever and you know be, be able to use that to control a bit but yeah um wow. we'll get to that at some another, some other day definitely <laughs> So what what else have you got on the um uh cho- on the shopping block there, uh, Red Falcon? What else are you working on? Um, let's see. So you know we've got all things helicopters. Obviously, um, I'm doing some right now. I'm doing some commission work for somebody that wanted a custom heli for their server. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm doing that. I'm working on some weapons. Uh, for someone that's commission work, doing a, a scar with a uh, grenade launcher. Uh, underneath so that's got some interesting animation challenges um yes. so that'll be fun and then yeah I'm, I'm really looking for things to push my depth of knowledge in daisy uh further so uh looking at doing a some sort of capture the flag type mod um i think i saw there was the one that was uh, used for an event it was like a whole map capture the flag but looking for something a little bit smaller where you can just put put the configure where the flags are configure the registration desk the holding pens for players and then it starts um, something simple that way uh, obviously the boats are are another mod that's probably going to be coming up uh, that's going to be pretty significant 
Um, and then other than that, I, I, I spend a lot of time uh, helping people out. So it's, I kind of pick and choose based on how they approach me. But if somebody comes and says, hey, I'm trying to do this and I'm having a hard time, mm-hmm. uh, happy to roll up my sleeves and, and dig into you know, what they've got going on in their server and how to get it set up or you know, help uh, some people with some retextures. I, I had done some uh, MVS retextures right before they were open source. So I have a bunch of uh, Photoshop templates that I built for those. Uh, so okay. sharing those with folks so that if they want to go uh, do retexturing, but they're relatively new to it. It's like, well, here's a leg up, and you can kind of see what I did, and then you can do that for other textures you want to do. Yes. Um, and then I think for me in general, the next one of the next steps. So like uh, Lennon brought up the, with the uh, you know building a team. So that's a that's going to be a big step, and that that will have to happen at some point. And probably an interim step is going to be doing collabs with folks. So. Definitely want to do a um, a uh, craftable heli, um, similar to there was the trolley cart that Spurgle did that I think uh, mm-hmm. he's interested in doing one for um, the heli mod. I'll probably do one. I was going to try to work with uh, with Dino to do. I really love some of the approaches he takes to craftable stuff. So uh, you know, do some collab with him. Um, I've also was invited to build a, a standalone heli um, for Deer Isle, which I've been working on. Yes. Um, so that will, I'm hoping to get that in with his next major release, and that'll be a single single seat open cockpit um, helicopter you can use to to scoot around Deer Isle, mm-hmm. and then doing some kind of interest. It'll be a little bit different than my main mod. But it will work. You'll be able to have both on your server if you want. And then oh, for storage, okay. yeah, for storage, you can use like a wooden crate or a sea chest, and it'll mm-hmm. basically bungee it to underneath the seat, so you can add some storage if you want. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's kind of a nice. fun, fun thing too. Um, and then uh, we'll see next. I've got kind of a bunch of half-started projects, uh, some additional buildings. I found some neat models that look very Daisy. Uh, for some new barns, looking to to put those out there for people to be able to kind of spice up their map. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and then it's interesting, you know, with the talk of console that that sounds like that would be an interesting challenge to dive into to look at with the config options available. What kind of things mm-hmm. could be done? Yeah, um, yes. and then kind of banging my head against that. Thereof. <laughs> <laughs> As I, I said, I think I if you made an admin app or tool for console <laughs> players, they would literally um, appoint you as the new Lord and Savior. <laughs> well, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> yeah. But that's, I definitely started on console. That was uh, my first year of DayZ, was on mm-hmm. Xbox playing on official and kind of, you know, learn. When I have people come on my server and they've been playing DayZ for, you know, hundred hours and they immediately, well, I want to build a base and how do I get a heli and, and where's all the good guns. And I'm thinking of how many weeks I spent where just rotating through lives on Xbox where I was only alive for two hours and then starved or was beaten to death or something like that. Oh, there. Yeah. And just, yeah. And that struggle that it was in tight. That struggle is really the core of day Z uh, rather than make it easy peasy. So, yeah. mm-hmm. Now, now talking about official and vanilla, you know there are some people who may not be the biggest fan of having like those military helicopters. Have you thought of taking a civilian approach and doing like ultralights and uh, gyrocopters? Absolutely, um, <clears throat> and that's uh, I, I actually have a gyrocopter model uh, that that may do. Um, you know, certainly, I think that's an option. And, and like I said too, op- I want to open it up so if other people want to do that. For their servers and really tone it down if somebody's got a very rp type server that they're really sticking to the canon i think those would be a perfect fit as well and that's why i tried to modularize my system so that's possible is this the gyrocopter here on the screen no that's the r22 trainer um so that is it's a fairly cheap helicopter in real life so it's often used as a training helicopter and that's where i out of the box that has the trainer mode enabled so you can't tip it more than 35 degrees either direction, and it won't 
fall any faster than I think it's eight meters a second. Yep. So it's it's a it's above the crash threshold. But this is the so other it, thing we never really touched on it, um, or we may have, and I've just forgotten because I'm getting that way. Um, but <laughs> the 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 crash mechanic of your choppers. That's one of the things that I was blown away by uh, with it. I don't know whether we have we touched on that really today. We haven't, have we? What do you What do you mean by crash mechanic? What, exactly well, what part so of it? When, the, the, you know, when the your helicopter crashes, and then when you know the damage and the you know, the the effects that it has on the um, heli while you're flying oh. when it starts to get damaged, and then once it actually drops out of the sky and crashes on the ground, what happens? Right. So so we start with somebody shooting at you. Um, depending on what part they hit, um, that will affect how it flies. If your engine takes damage, it actually uh, there's a point where it'll if the engine's running, it has a like a really nasty grunching noise that it makes. Um, and of course, on the heads up display, you get the the colored indicators saying that the engine's damaged. If the rotor blades get damaged, um, the uh, Actually, it'll stop. It'll make it so it's not flyable, but the main rotor will actually turn to a bent shape, so it changes the way it looks. Same thing with the tail rotor. If the tail rotor's in a damaged state, I think you have a an eighty five percent rotation where it'll just start spinning at about eighty five percent of full mm -hmm. uh, anti torque. So you you can counter it, but you're basically always in a spin. If they're badly damaged or destroyed, it's in an uncontrollable spin. And of course, there's a little klaxon that goes off uh, telling you that you have badness occurring. Um, yes. once, the dam once the engine is uh, badly damaged, it'll start smoking. Um, and then once the helicopter's ruined, um, if it's in flight, it'll just plummet to the ground like a brick. Um, if it's Once it's on the ground, um, any players that are in it are ejected, and right now, for the most part, you'll die during that process. And I'm trying to make that a little bit more flexible based on the impact speed and so forth. And then the helicopter explodes, and then obviously you get the uh, inventory gets scattered around, and zombies appear uh, oh, as got well. We've got a playing in the background here, yeah. um, one of the clips for, that's on the actual uh, Steam Workshop. And then when you see that explosion, the zombies spawn in um, and all the loot is just scattered. And the loot, that takes damage now too, doesn't it? It does. Um, so that'll take a random amount of damage. Um, obviously, if they are delicate pieces uh, that don't take much damage to ruin them, they can come out being badly damaged or ruined. If they're stouter objects, uh, they won't be as damaged. And of course, all that's configurable. So you can totally disable the heli crash site activity. You can disable zombies appearing. You can disable the distribution of the inventory. You can actually change how much uh, damage it can take randomly. Mm -hmm. So I tried to make that as flexible and configurable as possible. How's that going to work with the crates? Uh, the crates get ejected as well, and any of the contents of the crates are scattered around as well. Okay. If the if the if you have it configured where the crate is not removable, uh, the crate will disappear. So the contents will get scattered, but you can't get the crate. Right. Awesome, mate. I'm, and then I'm, I'm, I'm astounded by what you're doing. Um, and the other piece, like I said, kind of the, you know, with the boats and thinking about the the subtle motions. The sound was important too, so that's something I've been. Where the the helicopters are significantly different, like the KA twenty six, which is a uh, rotary piston engine. Um, mm -hmm. I went and did a bunch of research and and assembled some sounds to craft the startup, the engine run, and the shutdown. And it sounds like Uncle Joe's tractor, uh, because that's what in real life they sound like. Mm -hmm. Same thing with the R twenty two. That's a uh, a piston engine. So I went in sampled a bunch of different sounds and morphed them and compiled them into uh, the startup and shutdown uh, and running sounds. And I'll be refactoring the other helis that are just standard turbines that I grabbed the standard set I use and going and trying to find real-life examples. Uh, oh, uh, one question for you, Red, that someone said in the chat. 
is um could he add a delay for the infected to show up or at least spawn in a bigger radius around the crashed heli um so the delay i could add i haven't the radius is completely configurable right now right okay so you That's can good. do a mi minimum and maximum radius for both the loot spawn and the infected and the number of infected the other and, thing is the other thing as well to be aware of is yes there there could be a, cha a case where someone is griefing um you know they can see a chopper inside a base or something like that and shooting at it but for the most part it's going to be people shooting at a chopper that's flying in the sky and that chopper is going to spear in and crash somewhere most likely not near them um so they're not actually going to see the infected spawn in um i, I imagine johnny you're coming more from a bit of an immersion factor sort of thing so right. once that event happens, then the infected will do their usual, like they do at a, uh, um, the already in the game uh, crash events. And the, the infected can be scattered, you know, probably, I think up to about 100 metres around the uh, chopper um, in each direction. So, yeah, it looks a bit janky when it happens immediately and you're so close looking at it. Um, but for the, uh, for the in-game aspect of it, you're probably not going to notice it too often. Mm. That that's that's correct, and that you you see that too if you're in an admin mode, uh, flying around a server and you've got dynamic spawns of zombies. If you were walking, you would have never seen that occur because it happened long before you got there. But if you if you're flying in no clip and suddenly teleport right into the middle of a spot where zombies spawn, all of a sudden they start popping up everywhere, and it looks very unnatural. Well, that's it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Overall, so, absolutely. Because you've um, because you've really nailed down on this mechanic for helicopters, have you thought of experimenting with the idea of doing that for other things like vehicles? So when you crash a car, it turns into the appropriate wreck for it, and then you have loot spawn around it that was inside the uh, storage for it. I hadn't thought about it until this moment. Okay. But that, does, <laughs> there you go. that does sound like fun. Yeah. That does sound like it's... fun. That would be yeah. That it would, would be, be interesting really... like if I crash my Ada going 100, you know, return and then having a loot spawn around it. Yes, it's that just that immersion. <laughs> yeah. The that, other thing with with that would be awesome with actually. The, with the zombie spawns that I thought about was rather than just spawning and you can oh by the way you can configure what zombies appear in your config. So if you want to have specific ones, you can add those. If you've added additional mods with different kinds of creatures. You could have bears and wolves appear if you want to. Um, but one of the things I thought about, too, was um, what, if, what if the occupants of the helicopter that died in the crash become zombies themselves, mm. and their gear is on those zombies? If that, would, if that is doable, that would be um, pretty cool. But also, you've got to take into account the law um, where <laughs> apparently it's not 100%. But the overwhelming conjecture for the law is that the survivors are immune to the uh, infected virus. Um, so gotcha. I think, yeah. I think in this case, though, having that feature would be brilliant because I know with the with the infected models, the ones that the mm -hmm. the items that can be attached is um, the hats or helmets, the vests, and the backpack. Uh, they don't. I don't think they have slots for weapons or, uh, um, or belts or. Well, obviously the one. Uh, PVZ so... mod. PVZ mod has that. Um, yeah. Where mm. you can have weapons attached and all that. All the other gear. Get to work. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Johnny Bravo elaborated on it, and um, I don't know whether this is a doable function, um, but could it be set so that it's based on player proximity? Ah. Um, that you know, the closer a person is, um, a delay to the infected um, spawning. That's a that's certainly doable, and, and kind of a variant of that would be if somebody's close, the zombies or the infected uh, spawn in much further away, and then are attracted to it. Mm -hmm. So it's more like they're like like Boydie's portrayed in the past, where the the infected are kind of attracted to the yeah. to the crash site rather than yeah. they appear there magically. Yeah, that's that's a, mm -hmm. a good idea. 
it would that would be really cool, especially you know if you do get the helicopter first and you're doing the looting you with your group, and then all of a sudden this big horde just appears from like <laughs> a forest running towards you, like a bunch of sprinters or like military infected. Mate, that would be terrifying. Yeah. That would be fantastic to see though. Mm. See, obviously, you know, if you're shooting them. Uh, you know, other people have heard the helicopter, and then they hear a bunch of shooting. And it's like, right, there's somebody fucking there. Let's get to it. Create right. another really cool and like chance for an encounter. So that would be fantastic to see. Mate, is there anything else you want to share with us before we start moving on to the rest of the agenda? Um, you know, I think we, I think we've run the gamut of of uh, stuff that I'm working on, stuff that I've done actually come out of this with uh, a few good ideas. Um, and like I said, I um, always, other than make easier, make not go down faster, um, you know, some of those simple things. I really like some of these creative ideas. Um, mm -hmm. So that's pretty exciting. Um, so other than that, no, I'm just uh, excited about the community. I'm, I'm definitely feeling some positive momentum. I know we went through you know, a few rough times in the last couple of months with uh, uh, folks in the modern community and so forth, but uh, and some folks departing. But uh, I'm I'm positive about the future of of modding for DayZ and, and where things are going. Yes. Mm. Just want to keep that positive energy going. Yeah, exactly. You got you got to keep it going. You got to keep innovating. And the most important thing is you got to keep being helpful to other people. You can't you can't shut. Um, what you're doing, obviously not specific to yourself, but you can't shut what you're doing away. It's only it's only me that needs to know how to do things. It's like you know, if somebody wants to implement their own different thing, like Jacob Mango done for you, give them some tips, help them out a yeah. little bit. That's something mm -hmm. that the community needs a lot more. But it is going that direction, and it has been for a while. So it's really fantastic to see. I I agree wholeheartedly. Okay, we, um, well, not we, I saw a very, very interesting video on um, YouTube uh, made by a mate mm -hmm. of mine, um, and I was blown away by what he um, had done. Um, talk about prestige here, folks. And mm -hmm. he made real-life versions of the in-game EpiPen, Toxic Cure, and Morphine. Now, I'm not going to show you the full video. Um, you, know, you can see the little screen uh, thing going there. Um, I'll share the link to it in chat. Um, but me, some people are clever. He used a 3D printer um, and had some stickers <laughs> mm -hmm. custom made. Um, but I was blown away by this. Absolutely blown away. There's a link to the video. Add it to your watch later list. Um, but for those who want to see them, there you go. And the great thing about them is that they actually function like pens. Mm. The, the, yeah, the, the, <laughs> lids, the lids come up and you could write with them. That is so cool. It's fantastic. And he made this little I, I display box them. for them as well. And, oh, unbelievable. Yeah, I, I would love to see a way uh, where... Um, people could, um, you know, obviously there's copyright issues. There's no issue with making it yes. for yourself. Um, but, mm. yeah, that would be so cool to see, you know, on, on the actual BI store or something like that, that you could buy them and um, <clears throat> have them, you know, buy, buy a set, in a, you know, a little gift box or something like that. And, you know, because there's, I think, it's, yeah, like Luke's saying in chat, shut up and take my money. Um, for those of us who are fans of the game, um, something like that, that'd be so cool. And yeah, he even um, in game set them down um, uh, in game next to items and then took measurements to work out their approximate IRL size. I think he used like cans of beans or something like that. He did, yes. It's, it's a great video to watch. You know, it's, it's, it's not really Daisy uh, focused, um, you know, gameplay wise and that. But, you know, he, he shows you how he designed them using whatever this program is, Ultimaker and stuff like that. And it was just absolutely awesome to see. So please go over, um, chuck him a sub as well. He deserves a lot more subs. You know, we need to get this guy he to does. a thousand so he can start to get monetized. But he's got some good content on his channel as well. Um, and, you know, he's obviously a DayZ fan as well, folks, to go and make 
these items IRL. So absolutely yeah. phenomenal. It's... It is great because, you know, as you said, for quite some time, we've been, you know, we've been a huge advocate for more uh, merchandise for yep. DayZ, like little figures or like items from the game. So it's really cool that um, Prestige went out of his way to make these. And in the video, he actually said that he in did originally intend to give these away for the 100th episode, but he wasn't able to. So that was absolutely, it was unfortunate to see. Oh, mate, but the fact that he cool still prize. went ahead oh but he still made them yeah and he still you know he still showcased he showed his full the full process and it's like it's just so it's so cool it's it's fucking great i i would gladly gladly pay this guy for everything shipping even yeah. even a little bit of an extra tip just to have them i mm. would love to do that i mean like what be i don't know <laughs> forget forget i said anything daisy team if you're watching this Shh. Yeah, little this, secret. Topic, this topic never happened scotty <laughs> will send you a set just don't tell anyone <laughs> but yeah but i would i would absolutely amazing. definitely recommend definitely recommend give give prestige a watch give them some love and attention um and you never know maybe you'll make some more now, I had to share this clip. Um, that guy, Sil, um, he, he's uh, back um, <laughs> making content again and um, just sharing DayZ stuff as well. I'm, 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 big, I'm a big fan of his. Um, this clip <laughs> blew me away. What the fuck, man? Make sure I've got audio <laughs> on. It's, it's good. <laughs> I didn't have that on big screen. was take a tire off lemons what what do you why do you think it did that you're our console expert why do you think that car behaved like that mate now i'm gonna bet i'm gonna bet five bucks that he was probably playing on a community server i yep. may be wrong but um a lot of the stuff that you see on consoles because there's there's thousands of videos of just mm. <laughs> cars going everywhere and um a lot of the community, the community servers don't properly optimize their servers, and they'll have so much loot, and they'll have stuff that exceeds the um, loot economy's like standards and what it can handle. It absolutely breaks the game. There yeah. are people that will make like because I think it's like around how much is it, like twelve thousand for the loot economy, like the max. I'm not too sure. Okay, but but there will people there there will be people that will go up to like twenty or thirty or forty thousand for items. They'll just completely throw it out there, not understanding what, what could happen. Yep. Then you have stuff like this where cars turn into like javelins and they're being flung up in the air. And <laughs> I've seen it's, that it's video that Dope Mods is um, referencing in uh, chat there, the one where it's a base and they've got like trucks and a ton of cars in there and uh, someone's trying to move one out. They bump one car and it just turns into this massive <laughs> shit show of cars and trucks just flying everywhere and players dying. Mm. And uh, it was just absolutely insane. But a it's lot of this lot comes better. back to what we've talked about, uh, Lemons. With this, yeah, and It's something I know we're harping on it, but I'm going to keep harping on it because we've had no answer, no explanation as to why, but console need dedicated service. Give them the option. If people want to throw money at fucking Nitrato or maybe another company, but if, if they want to do that, let them. I don't understand mm. why it's not an option. Would that 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 have to fix That's this one issue? One thing too it? is, yeah, I mean, it would be, and because the way Nitrato does it is, 
they base their hardware off of what the player wants in regards to their slot count. So if you have a 10 slot, you're not going to have anything near what you have in a 50 slot. It's completely different. So you've got a lot less resources that you're working with. which can cause stuff like this to happen, you know, because Daisy's a big game and it has a lot of physics simulation that goes on in it. And it requires a lot of power to make sure that all goes smoothly. So you'll get lagging, you'll get hiccups, and you can get a lot of issues if you don't have the appropriate hardware to run that. So it'd be nice, and you can technically do it. Like you could, if you call them and you you get the right person, and you 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 ask them formally. Imagine you could work something out with them in that sense, but they should make it more streamlined because a lot of people don't know how to do any of that. You know, a lot of these people are new to the community; they're new to the whole thing of making servers. They just want to have one up for their buddies to play on, you know. It's a lot of the servers on Xbox. It's just one guy, he has a group of friends, and he wants to throw up a server on Chinoris just to play with his buddies, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, um, that's the issue. It's not streamlined enough, uh, streamlined enough on uh, Nitrato where anyone who's new can just understand it and go with it, you know. Yep. And I will say they've done a good job, though, because they've made it very easy. Like, um, I'm not sure if Scale Spears in the chat still, but... He, he's done a lot of tutorials as well for using Nitrato. They've really made it very straightforward. Like, there's literally a window, like a little uh, little HUD, where you can go in there and actually change certain things from the init C file. And you, all you have to do is click mm-hmm. save, save changes, and it's instantly put out there. Right. Uh, and it's, it's nice, too, because given us that tool, because we don't really have access to the init C, they've allowed us to use something similar to at least get some of that functionality. So we're not we're not ever gonna have full access to it. I know they're they're trying and they're giving us alternatives for it. Yep. We're never gonna have that full that full accessibility that you have on PC. And in some circumstances it's not really Amia's fault because there are some issues with uh, Microsoft and with Sony when it comes to modding it from third parties. Yes. And they are just, they are not a fan of that. And it's, it's a big problem too, because with their last gen consoles, like the PS3 and the Xbox 360, their modding was rampant. You know, if you, if you went into a Call of Duty lobby, watch a 30 second video and you'd get a full mod menu, you'd have like no clip, you'd have aimbot and all that stuff. And it was, yes. it's, it was yes. terrible. Oh, so they really cracked down on it with their next gen consoles and unfortunately mm-hmm. not only did that screw over all of the people who were doing it maliciously it also destroyed the opportunity for everyone, anyone who wanted to actually mod Legit. for the better of their games yep so, try on though they've in in the short year that they've put out a few updates they've done a lot of stuff in my map zagoria on console wouldn't have been possible if it wasn't for the stuff they put out recently so yes they're working hard for that sense because they, they they don't have to do any of this you know they could just throw their hands up and say you got you got it you know that's all you get you don't have to do any of this for you they're trying to do more they're trying to at least give us something close to pc it's never going to be the same they're trying to compensate for that blank space so it's good that, to see we just we, we need we need more improvements on that aspect but you know, mm. from from the sounds of it and from the way things are looking, it'll eventually be getting there. It'll eventually get there. For sure. I can't wait to it's, see it, what you guys... Slow and steady wins the race, you know? <laughs> well, that's it. Yeah, that's it. You've got to have patience for this kind of stuff, but it'll eventually mm. get there, which is something that I think will benefit everybody in the community. Um, one thing I was thinking about, too, and this is going back to the uh, last last episode with how Arma does their community spotlight, Mm-hmm. And having the community DLCs is if someone actually reached out and tried to have a formal discussion with Bohemia, to have something like that for DayZ. You know, it may not have to be every single person, but if one group of very dedicated modders and very good people that have a good background mm-hmm. made an appropriate pitch, uh, pitch to Bohemia, yeah, I don't see why they wouldn't potentially pursue that. You know, and there there would have to be discussions with Microsoft and Sony in regards to their licensing for that. It, could and I say could very very loosely be possible in that sense. I'd I'd say like if there was any way of games on console pardon me that have DLC. <laughs> so as you said, you know, if it's a well made one, why couldn't um there be a DayZ one? Uh, and, 
Exactly, and the big issue too is a lot of a lot of maps and a lot of mods on PC use third-party assets that may not be commercially licensed. Yeah, they can't use it for full DLC. So if someone was to bring a yep. map to console and it has anything wrong, they could get yeah, that, that's legal, a, that's they a into a lot point. of legal that's trouble. That's a really good point. Something not only them, but Bohemia but, yeah. and Microsoft could all get in trouble from that. So they really have to be careful what yeah. gets put through and that's why yeah if, if there's music, really if there's music involved as well and yeah, yeah stuff like that it's, it's horrible and like the models you know because i know some maps do or some not even maps but just some uh mods utilize my mo um models that may have been sourced from a video game or sourced from something where it wasn't properly agreed upon to use it so that could really be a big issue you know well that's it yeah but it's it's it is interesting we're talking about this because that kind of leads into the next topic that we have next. Yep. That's <laughs> a uh, boy. Do you wanna you wanna discuss this? So about? I got a um uh, a email. Um, <clears throat> let me just find it. From Bill. Hi, I hope that you are well. I found this email address on the 87.8 Survivor FM webpage. Yes, we have a webpage, folks. 87.87a uh, Survivor FM .com. Uh, My mm. apologies if this has been proposed before, as I am not part of the Daisy developer community. I had an idea that I would like to suggest to the Daisy map developer community, but do not really know where to start. Please let me know your thoughts on the following and if it would actually be feasible. A community assembled map. Since it takes a great deal of time to create a DayZ map, why not have a number of map developers all contribute to one grand map that would be managed by a single contractor or some sort of board of directors? The large empty map containing only its topography uh, and, it, and would be presented to each of the developers in a Zoom call, could be Discord, could be whatever. The map hmm. would be passed out to the designers who would wish to contribute. Each person would stake a claim to certain areas of the map. More senior developers could work on large cities and the junior developers could work on military bases, smaller towns and villages. Once each model was completed, they could all be assembled into the main map by a team of chosen individuals. Various roads, tunnels and railroad tracks could be added later to link up each of the modules. If possible, this procedure would not only save time on map development, but would be a fun team event and provide for the same sort of variety seen in the real world. World. If successful, this could be done on a yearly basis, having a fun new map for Daisy players to look forward to each year. Many thanks, Bill. Now, I shared this with the um, with the uh, hosts and that, and DOJ reminded me that he'd actually um, uh, set a suggestion similar to this some time back as well. Um, hmm. And I, I, you guys know what I'm like. Um, I love collabs. <laughs> um, I, I think that would be a great idea. It's got some challenges. Um, you know, some people have got certain styles and, um, <clears throat> you know, you'd want to make sure that it was managed well, but like, well, so that it, that there was, you know, it did, didn't ruin immersion and just the, the general look, you know, you've got one area that's snow and then right next to it's a desert map and um, stuff like that. But <laughs> I, I, yeah. think, I think there's some merit to it. Yeah, and I I've seen it executed is. before. You did something similar. It. Yeah. And I've did something, something similar before on um, Gary's mod. Uh, that's a big Steam game for a lot of people who are playing on console. But, um, we had worked with a group of people, and we had set up a map in the uh, Hammer Editor, and we got a bunch of people to come in, and make their own sections for the map, so that it was it was on a smaller scale, uh, scale of, of course. So it wasn't as big as what we'd be doing for DayZ. We got a bunch of people together. It was for like a role play server, and we just got each section divvied up. And each person did, and it was amazing. Like, it went so well. There were so many people having just a fun time and expressing their creativity for it. Only issue I would see if they tried that is there would be a conflict of interest. You know, there could be some people who have one vision, mm -hmm. other people have another. And like you were saying, <laughs> with the snow on one side and the desert on the other. Yeah. Plus, it comes, it comes back to, really... to what Red Falcon talked about before with, um, you know, people who contribute assets to it and if they left the project, would they want to take their assets that they contributed? And you know, mm. there, there's – Dumpgrass said in chat, you know, it's a terrible idea. Everyone 100% have to agree. Any contributions would be the maps and that alone. No taking it or claiming assets as personal stuff. It would be very hard to do, but it is possible. I don't think it's a terrible mm. idea. Um, it's like, a complex Like Falcon it's a complex said, it's getting the right idea. people. 
yeah. getting the right people for you know because there's there, you can't just get any person off the street who makes mapping yeah. you have to make people that will actually work with each other and collaborate and be happy to work with each other you know mm-hmm. but in that sense like in a perfect world if you were to get the right people the right time the right place it could totally be possible and you could get mm-hmm. an amazing result out of it if everyone was working in yeah, collaboration with each other because big game studios yeah. do it you know yeah. Big, uh, big studios like Bohemia, for instance, they their their maps go well, and they have tons of people working on it. It's not just one person working on these maps. They have tons of different design teams and stuff that have to go through like the um, proofing and the development and the drafting for the maps. So, if, if people were to organize a team of people that could do that, it'd be amazing to see how that happen. You know, it's similar to our last episode with the team who was working on the Armor Two map or the Armor Three map, and it is it is possible it's just a matter of having right people in the right time in the right place <laughs> and the and the right structure having the and the, know, the right, right structure set of at guardrails and safety nets to kind of keep everybody on the right trajectory mm-hmm. you'd need like a, a happy just... bombs type person to get that going <laughs> yeah see so see that's the thing that i've actually done before back um back in extra care um uh Kafina was teaching me the ropes with terrain builder just a few little bits and bobs uh because i wanted to propose adding a location in the alpha map so we kind of agreed that that would be possible and we did end up implementing that uh we kind of had a structure we kind of had a rough idea of what we wanted um down there in terms of what the what the where the location would be what kind of um, area it would be. Would it be more military-focused, industrial, or or residential? Uh, we kind of looked at some reference images, and then we went from there. And what we've done is, is that um, we had separate layers in Terrain Builder where I would have my own dedicated layer, which then I could then uh, transfer over to Kafina so he can take a look, make some suggestions or changes, give it back to me, and we work on from there until we felt it was more finalized. And we added some really cool details, and a lot of players at the time really, really liked it. So even on a... a you know, that was just the two of us. As a team, if you do it properly, you know, talking about the structure, and if everybody agrees on, okay, this area is more focused on a um, a hilly, mountainous region with a few little villages here and there, here's some reference images, as long as you keep the communication up and the agreements are all, 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 all done proper, because with sure. that, it's even a good set up for a community DLC map. Uh, you know, mm. we were talking to um, Sergeant last weekend, and this kind of idea would be absolutely perfect for a community map, um, especially if it is going to be using um, vanilla assets, or if BI or whoever team takes over can verify that the assets being brought on are, you know, the licensing is all clear, or if they've made them themselves, it would be really, really good. It, I think it would be a really, really good idea as mm-hmm. long as everybody who takes part in it is clear on the purposes, the legal requirements, the agreements, everything. Mm. I think it'll be. And I think like Dump Cross really said, it would have to be like an employer employee situation. Yes. It, it can't be, be like buddy be. buddy. It would have to be very formal yes. in that sense. <clears throat> yep. Yeah. And then, so, so, okay. So then take this concept and then mm-hmm. instead of a map, um, which I think is a great idea. What if it was an overhaul? So looking like at similar to expansion, similar, but but where we're looking at like vehicles. Okay, the the way that vanilla cars work. Well, what if we did an overhaul as a collection of mods that says, okay, we're going to make the vehicles different. We're going to theme it for role play w- around this storyline and change things through mods in one giant collection to make the game behave slightly differently. Mm-hmm. But, the, but the same concept where it's a team, everybody's contributing different parts. It's all playing to one common theme, one common story. Mm-hmm. I think, I think that would be really, really good. I mean, the, the idea mm-hmm. of the, of a community of people, a group of people being able to come together to create these kind of, and these mods map overhaul whatever yeah. i think it's something that 
it has been done before, you know, like Namolsk. like I just said, expansion is mm -hmm. Banov. Namolsk as well. Banov, Banov was you know, a single person, just... but he's had some help from you. Uh -huh. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> More stuff coming soon. But um but it's as long as everybody can because obviously, you know, you can all you can have that employer employee basis, you can have all these contracts and that, but you also have to have that level of communication in if everybody can get on with each other. That's the most important thing because obviously the, these kind of things would be done for you know in their free time, more commonly for free. And the last thing you want is you know you're doing this kind of major project, and the people you, you're doing it with or doing it for is a bit of a you know not a pleasant person. But I think I think doing those kind of things, heck, you know, what I would love to see a sound overhaul. A complete mm. audio and sound overhaul of the game, um, you know, different sounds for, well, pretty much everything. You know, really expanding upon what can be done with the audio and getting it through there. I mean, the audio for DSC has always been really, really cool, but um, I, I know in Armor Three, you know, there's a couple of audio mods there which really enhance and expand what can be done with the audio engine there. So, doing that for DSC would be even a really cool feat of itself. So. Lots of ideas with this concept, I think. And lots of really cool mm. ideas can be brought forward as long as people like, uh, come together and actually do it. Like Dumbcraw just said, um, he was saying, when Daisy starts doing five updates a year, I'd love to make a team to do a community framework for Daisy fixing tons of bugs and issues. The many mm. yearly updates, which are amazing, do uh, it, it's a, it just makes it a lot more difficult, you know, because every yeah. update changes a lot of stuff mm. and you have to really keep up with it. That would be interesting to have something like that. Yeah, because I, I know with um with all the games, like one that springs to mind is is the Elder Scrolls for Oblivion. Now mm. they have a major mod which is pretty much essential, which has continued on to fix the bugs that were left back when um their update stopped. And to do that for Daisy, you know, when they do, because obviously it is going to be inevitable when they do stop making updates for the game and this is the definitive version have fun doing that kind of like community framework or unofficial patch mod i think that would be a really really cool basis and you know when it comes to that fucking hard one in i like what jocko said <laughs> there i'm working on a couple of group maps with a few people at the moment just finding the right people that fit with the group uh with passion and vision that aren't chasing fortune or fame yeah mm. that's it altruism Absolutely. altruism folks um, yeah. The word of the the word of the stream altruism. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, something else that blew my mind um, through the week. We've we've touched on this a little mm. bit of late, um, but and yeah, we've touched on this guy a hell of a lot of late. But bloody zesty polvo, man! I have purposely not watched this video um, because I wanted to so be a bit a surprised. A couple of days ago, because... the power went out for the entire island of Puerto Rico, and I don't own a solar panel or a generator, so I spent the better part of 36 hours being completely unproductive, just sitting on the sofa or laying in bed watching TikTok and YouTube all day. And when my phone died, I would go to my car to charge it. And then I remembered that Tony's always playing DayZ with me through a website called GeForce Now by NVIDIA, and he does this from his OG Xbox, straight from Microsoft Edge, as weird as that sounds. So it got me thinking, if he can do on the xbox then i can probably do it on my android so i just went to the google play store and i searched geforce now and holy shit they have an app so i installed the app and i logged in obviously for this work you need to own daisy on steam you also need to create a geforce now account and link your steam account to it the beauty of this app is that you don't need to wait for the game to download you instantly have access to a huge catalog of games provided that you already own them or they're free to play i just realized that this sounds like a sponsored segment i promise these people are not fucking paying me to say this shit for certain games you will have on-screen controls but if you have a bluetooth controller then you don't need it i apologize in advance for the video and the audio quality i was using a shitty old xbox headset and then i started using a different app for background recording which made it even worse anyway this is how it went okay i think we're recording now let's see so i want to see how far i can get in this life i'm using the geforce now app on my phone i'm using cellular data of course i'm using mobile data and i'm using an xbox controller okay I think I need to turn on the Bluetooth here for this to work. 
Perfect. This is kind of the one of the biggest problems. I can't get rid of the, the stuff on the screen, all the buttons and shit. I need to turn on the brightness a little bit. The fact that I'm able to stream a PC game to my phone while using a controller is pretty fucking insane. There's some latency, definitely. I mean, there's always going to be latency because you're streaming a game. So there's always going to be a little latency. But I also have, it's working over Bluetooth and Bluetooth adds more latency and it still feels really smooth. This is insane. If you could somehow somehow plug in a mouse and keyboard to your phone which i'm pretty sure there's a way to do that this could be a, an actual thing <laughs> latency is high i'm all sorts of messed up right now okay so this is what i was trying to tell you guys there's a couple issues with this i already played it a little bit kind of feels bad that i didn't get my first impressions my first reactions is that a player also the screen is incredibly small like i can't see what's right in front of me I can't see past like 20 meters when you have a controller of course i'm gonna stop it there because yes. we are going to do uh, what we always do um, and share the link <laughs> and get people, if you want to find out more about it, um, the link will be, uh, well, I'm glad you've already, already on it. I'll do, uh, I'll share it to the YouTube crowd. Um, already done it. <laughs> <laughs> I've already done it, fam. You're all right. But um, I, I'm, who the fuck is <laughs> <laughs> this is the future, people. You can play fucking Daisy on your mobile phone. It's, it's, you never, I, yeah. <laughs> like, saying before know, about, um, it's mod. Now that we have these options, people who want to test out PC and test out these mods have the opportunity to, if they're limited to like an Xbox, you know, or just have their phone or tablet, a crappy computer. I know, um, I know Scale Speeder, for some of the stuff he does, he uses a, I'm not sure if it actually is GeForce now, but he uses something similar. A lot of his videos are filmed using that program. And it's great because it gives so many people so many opportunities to do this kind of stuff, do a day Z and actually have a fun time doing it, you know? Because a lot of uh, people just don't I, have the software for, say, though, for the hardware. I thought I was a hardcore day Z addict. This motherfucker downloaded it for his phone because his um, <laughs> his computer was down or whatever. Zesty is next level fucking Daisy hardcore fanboy. That is just insane levels. Like you said, yeah, you could barely see fast. Like I'm just picturing playing it on something this size. Yeah, you know, maybe maybe on an iPad or something like that. It might be uh, even more doable. But how the shower. <laughs> Uh, even, even watching someone stream on your phone, Daisy, is hard to do because it's such a big open world game. But yeah, that's insane. That is absolutely insane. I'm stunned by that. What are you? The, think, greedy, pe the greedy president chat just said uh, hitting control in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Malcolm? It's um, I. I it's exciting that the future is taking this direction. It yeah. also makes my head spin exactly the scenario he was saying where, you know, power's out, did everything I could, ran everything out of juice, sitting yeah. in my car charging my mobile device, and, oh, wait, I could play DayZ on it. <laughs> on my cellular oh my data <laughs> as well. <laughs> right. Insane. Absolutely insane. Uh, Scarlet is saying Xbox Game Pass. Um, Ultimate allows you to play Xbox DayZ on a phone, tablet, or old um, uh, PB, whatever PB is. Um, and GeForce now allows you to... PC? PC, maybe. <laughs> um, GeForce now allows you to play many PC games on phones or old PCs, laptops, including armor, etc. at high settings. Could you imagine trying to fly one of your choppers on a mobile phone, mate? Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> that should be, like, the There's absolute a challenge. There's minimum. a challenge for you, folks. <laughs> Send us yep. a video of this you successfully flying, uh, taking off, flying for a few kilometers and landing on a mobile phone. Just well, imagine well, if someone used the, um, the gyro systems in a phone. In a model that could um, oh. that could influence the controls like the helicopter. So you you would move your phone around. And <laughs> if, if Challenge anybody, accepted. If, if anybody <laughs> in chat or anything like that can try and do that on any mobile device, the um, the stream the the stream deck not stream deck the steam I keep fucking mixing them up the steam deck <laughs> or if you can do it on a phone or anything like that, let us know. 
Because I want to see that. I want to Don't mind you saying that. it's mapped to a controller, so it could work. Hmm. Interesting. Ooh. Interesting. That that go for the old people who are like me, who when they hold a controller, when you're turning corners, you lean. And, you know, I still I find, thought, I I still I find myself leaning. if there's a wall in front of me, I'm like <laughs> thinking I could look over it. Yeah, I go, yeah, that's just me. That's just me. You know what we got to see? Daisy with a Wii remote. Be done. Oh. <laughs> Guitar <laughs> Hero controller. Yep. <laughs> oh my god, that would imagine, be hilarious. Just imagine playing DZ with an Atari 26 controller. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> now this next topic, lad, this uh, this is your one, mate. Dear old delay. Fill us in with what happened with John McClain. It's so sad. Right. I was I was absolutely devastated when I found this out. So uh, So dear I was set to release shortly after 117 was going to come out. Um, you know, he's been working a lot of time on this update and it was so exciting, you know, to finally get a hands on what he's been developing for the last six months. Unfortunately, there was a bug with Terrain Build, a, a, a critical bug, which prevented his um, latest build from being loaded. Uh, and from the sounds of it, you know, it's like, okay, no biggie, I'll just go to one of the backups except his backups had the same bug. And he has now lost around two, I think it was two to three weeks of um, progression with Dear Isle, unfortunately. So because of that, he's gone back to the drawing board. He is absolutely pushing out. I, I've seen that he's been streaming yeah. uh, his demands. So... Um, the delay, you know, his the the new release is being delayed for that time, two to three weeks, which <laughs> I know down to Jesus, it's really weird. Like, how could such a fantastic program have a bug? <laughs> wow. But yes, unfortunately, Dear Isle has been delayed. So anybody who was really excited for that, you got to, you just got to wait a little bit more. Um, you know, he's got his Discord um, available. So if you want to keep track of what has been going on, you can do. You can also follow him on, uh, I think it's Twitch that he streams to as well. Um, hello, Click Daddy. Uh, and um, so, yeah, that's pretty much the situation with it. Um, it. He's not sure how the bug happened. So hopefully with um, with his um, his, you know, with him working back on it, hopefully it doesn't happen again. Um, and, you know, with that, we'll keep people updated and hopefully um, we can actually see what he has been working on. And it's going to be, it is going to be good. I always say if, <laughs> how, do I, how do I explain it? I always say that the first iteration of something you make is always terrible. So always go back to rework it and it's always better. So I, I would like to say this could possibly be a blessing in disguise, but we'll just never know until that full release. So, um, you know, John McLean, if you are watching, you know, props to you, mate. You keep up the good work and regardless of how long it'll take, the best of uh, best of luck to you and we can't wait to see what you've got going. Yeah, it is sad, but... Mate, it, it, he's dedicated. Yeah, that guy's been working on that oh, map God, yes. for how fucking long now? You know? <laughs> that, it's just insane the work he does. I quite often just go and loiter in there, just watching him place objects. The it's it's mm -hmm. definitely it takes a special person to be a map builder. Um, it does. It does. The the level of detail it's it's insane. Just sitting there placing something and just twisting it. I, I watch him. Yeah, he twists it and he lifts it and until he gets it in the right spot and then then he would just go back and delete everything he's just done because he's not happy with it the way it looked once he yep. had everything in place and start all over again and yeah it's up there with coding oh yes mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah trust as a fucking or, or texturing or any kind of level of creation like i said when you when you do it first time it's always it's always terrible so always go back and redo it. And heck, it's 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 like the way the way I always see it is that the first time you do something like a model or texture, or whatever, it's a concept. It's it's never the final thing. And a draft. always go back and read. Yeah, it's exactly that's what it is. It's a draft, and you got to you got to go back and you got to take what you've learned, and then there you go. 
like yeah, like Greedy said, hats off to all the coders and modders on all platforms. Most do it for love and altruism. Well, that's word it. of the uh, word of the episode. <laughs> altruism. <laughs> altruism. Oh. Um, now you had another topic you wanted to discuss, didn't you, um, lad? Yes. Yeah, so there's been um, there's been a couple of a couple of interesting things that's been happening this week, and I've already spoken to this person for permission to discuss it. So quite some time ago, we talked about a few people in the community who has left AZ modding and, you know, we'll wish them the best and whatnot. And one of them was Mass. He went uh, he went away for quite some time, working a few little things, obviously, you know, commission-based stuff. But now he has been working with a few people in the modding community to bring out a new update for MMIO and... He is now working on his new server. He is developing a new server for a Armor 3 Milsom community. Obviously, it is going to be for DayZ from Spearhead. He has previously had a server with them, but he's taken another go at it, Spearhead 2.0. He's going for a hardcore vanilla kind of plus, plus, uh, kind of vanilla plus kind of map he's going to be using um some well his own developed mod pack as uh, his, his own server pack that he's been discussing with quite a few people including myself he's going to be using snafu and he's taken what he's learned from his previous attempts at servers and really learning from that learn from his mistakes and trying to bring something that can really change how things are now there are some features that he isn't bringing back like um the underground bunkers that he developed but i'm really really excited to see how it goes and he's trying to aiming Wait, for did you say he's not bringing one. back the underground bunkers yes he had underground bunkers in the previous version but since he's not using map link he decided best not to okay. he's trying not to use traders uh traders is something that's obviously a very delicate thing that you have to do right he's currently working on trying not to implement stuff like that but he's he's really dedicated this time around he's i'm from the stuff i've seen the stuff that we've talked about i'm really really excited to see what he's got going available he is going to be using dump Gras, um really awesome uh mod the building fortifications mod he is going to be using that um he's as far as my way is going to be using the ammo making mod stuff like that so mm -hmm. Really cool familiar mods that really expand the game. Uh, so obviously to prevent, you know, BBP or expansion base build and stuff like that, he's decided to go, you know what? No, let's do this instead. And if anybody wants to give it a shot, check out Spearhead. Um, and, you know, keep in touch with myself. I'll, I'll give you some updates, but we will be announcing more stuff. I want to talk about it uh, later on. Uh, especially when I take over and give you guys some updates and that's really, really, really cool stuff coming. And I'm so glad to see one of my dear friends coming back into the modding Dame. community. Dame, he's so, a good bloke, Mass. I like him. He's, he's so nice. Like, yeah. He's really, really, really nice. Okay, we are now going to, um, because this is my final episode, everyone knows my yes, it is. Pet, um, passion is modders. Um, so I went and picked a bunch of mods that I want to showcase um, in this, my final episode as the main mm -hmm. host of the show. The first, let me just um, bring it up and then share the screen. Now, this isn't a new one. But it popped up in my um, recommended feed. This is from last year, and I don't remember seeing it. Basic pipe bomb. Mm. Has, it, has anyone seen this? No, I haven't seen it before. I've heard of it. I think I've heard Damon Forge talk about it a few times, yes. So we're giving a use to the pipe, which I fucking love. Mm. 
I do love the bardance. That dance. is a really unique. <laughs> yeah, I was just about to say that's a really unique way of uh, sorting that out. <laughs> So we're basically making an info, ammonia nitrate mm -hmm. fuel and oil. The dump guy is saying in chat, the gas soak rags, the amount you attach to the pipe bomb extends the fuse burn time. So it can be very short mm -hmm. or longer. That's awesome. Called the basic pipe bomb, Johnny Bravo. Voila! I love it. Look at that. That's I love beautiful. it. It's it's realistic. You know, for those who are into the immersion, you know, it's a bomb you can make in the game. Um, yeah, you know, imagine if Daisy um, actually added this, because this is something that mm. is made completely out of items in the game. He didn't need, to, yes, you know, other than a retexture of the um, actual pipe bomb. Um, but that's just fucking awesome. Thank you, Lemons, for sharing that. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, it it's really really cool to see stuff like this. Is it actually a sure. mod on the um, mod store? In the because there's no um, link to it in the description of the video. I don't I don't see anything. Um but I think I think it's one of the items in Genesis. Um so as Dumpgrass said as well, most if not all of Damon Forge's mods are repackable and are on his GitHub. So if you do want to try and give it a go, then go to um, Demon Forge's GitHub, see what he's got available there, and go for it. But I do, I do believe that the pipe, the pipe bomb, is a part of Genesis. So if you just want to try it out, get yourself on Genesis as well. Give that a shot and mm -hmm. see how it goes. Because that that blew my mind. I was like, how did the, mm. how did I miss that? That was just, it's just <laughs> such a good mod. Yeah, I love the I immersion love side of it. I love type mods. Um, and, mm. yeah, that would just be, uh, and there's so many um, aspects of it that you can use to to limit the, um, you know, some people may go, oh, geez, on a on a standard loot server, you know, you can find uh, most of those ingredients quite easily. The people will be making bombs left, right and centre. But you could play with yep. the uh, um, uh, files and you could limit the amount of fuel around or yep. the amount of uh, fertiliser around. Uh, the, you could, you know, the, the easy one would be limit the amount of pipes uh, because, you know, the other two you need for other aspects, vehicles and for uh, gardening. But pipes... What what use do they have? You know, they could become like the old um, you know, one of the first raid tools was the raid sledgehammer. Um mm -hmm. and you know, on, on servers that um had that, you know, the the sledgehammer was as rare as hen's teeth. So you could just make the pipe, which is a fairly innoc innocuous item, a very rare item. Easy to control for servers that are looking for a good way to, you know, leave it as not something that just happens at, you know, you, you pick up your C four from crash sites and all the rest of it. I Blown away, absolutely blown away. Yeah. Demon Forge is another legend of the community who does some amazing freaking work. You know, he's got a link to his um, GitHub right there. I don't know how you would mm -hmm. go about um, uh, adding that to a mod but that takes people um, smarter than me, but yeah, so there's plenty so of people 
um, in the uh, Discord and in other Discords who would be happy mm. to help you if you were wanting to look at it. Uh, he's got some uh, yeah, rules and, there. And Make sure you visit his GitHub. What was that you were going to say? Yes. I was I was going to say thank you to Dom for linking the GitHub um, links in the chat. Much appreciated there. Oh, Demon Forge. So for some reason, my message didn't go through, but yes, it's on my GitHub and available to repack into your mod pack. I did not know Demon Forge was here. Mm. I wasn't blowing wind up his ass because I knew he was in <laughs> chat. Um, but yeah, that's just fucking God tier item. Um, yeah, you know, just and yeah, you know, we we go back to this idea of what you guys were talking about before. Yeah, you know, I had a dream um, of my real stories mod. Um, we've got a mod we're going to showcase soon, which is um, sort of touching on that. Um, but uh, oh, fuck off, Ike. It's good to see you, though, mate. <laughs> I've missed you. I've missed you for the last oh, couple Ike. of months, mate. I've I really have. <laughs> I need you in my life, Ike. <laughs> I need you more than you know, my man. You. You're, you're, you're the sort of mate that everyone needs because it keeps them from ever getting a big head. Um, <laughs> you, you just, he just, he's one of my favorite people here I've met through fucking gaming. I've got a, a big smile, mate. You actually make, this is the first time I've gotten a bit <laughs> emotional. It's made my day that Aww. you're in here, buddy. It really has. Um, thank you so much. And uh, it'll be nice to see the arse end of you as well. <laughs> and thankfully the podcast <laughs> is seeing upon a better path. <laughs> yeah. <But> no. <laughs> Ike's got himself a super hot engineer girlfriend, so he doesn't have time for us nerds anymore. Oh no, that's fair. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um derail my train of thought. Shut up, Siri. <laughs> But yeah, yeah. So, um, so like I'm a more immersive um, uh, version of Daisy. Yeah, you know, I, I would love to see a a pack with a you know maybe a custom map um, where it's got dump grass, metallurgy, and mining mod, and ammo making, and um, you know realistic items like this, and storage that you craft. Um, you don't just find or buy from a trader, and you yes. know just a, a really. Uh, realistic, but again, that's a massive project and would take some amazing people. Muffa Pick, thank you so much for the raid, mate. Um, and thank you for everyone else who's followed and uh, subscribed over on YouTube um, throughout the show so far. We'll do a full list of everyone at the end, but yeah. yes, Demon Forge, fucking mwah. god tier work, mate. Yeah. That is just a brilliant, brilliant item. Um, I love the fact that you know, everyone knows I had a lot of issues with the landmine. Um, I don't like these things that you find and they're so overpowered, whereas something you have to actually craft and, you know, go to the trouble of, you know, even as it is, it's still a difficult item to craft. It's not something that, you know, who walks around with a jerry can of fuel on them? Who walks around with a bag yeah, of fertilizer on them? Yeah, you have to them. Yeah. You have to so prep it, them in advance, which is something that's really cool. Yep. Great, great idea. Absolutely brilliant. M more things like that for the um, for the game, folks. More things like that. Um, this next one. Fuck. If you, anybody Dean. has, a, <laughs> if anybody has arachnophobia now, turn away. <laughs> Dino's Vino's released a spider mod. <laughs> I fucking hate spiders. I fucking hate them with a passion. Um, he shared with me a video that someone made of them. Um, I'm going to press play and then I'm going to go to the toilet because um, I do <laughs> not like spiders at fucking all. Um, King of Lobar <laughs> made this. <laughs> nice groovy. <laughs> that is fantastic. Oh. 
fucking ah, that. <laughs> See, if there's one thing that I've always liked about uh, Dino Spinos is that he always creates something really unique and. <laughs> right, Boydie has now found a, t a deterrent to Ike just as Boydie's about to fucking leave. Typical fuck's sake. If only Dino Spinos actually made the mod earlier. <laughs> but I, I really, really like his mods. I really, really liked how, how he goes about them. And Dino so cool. <laughs> but yes, really, really cool mod. Re really, really nice to, to he, see. He, he said to me that he swears he only wanted the nice Demolsk eye spider. Um, so, <laughs> and then it's evolved into whatever the fuck that was about. Even the thumbnail freaks me out. But one of the guys in my Discord, um, he's, he's got this clever little gif um, that you can send in a link. Um, and it was a spider, like it looked like it was crawling across your screen. Um, oh, my yes. mate Moonshine said he actually threw his phone across the room thinking it was a real spider. Um, just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and hats off to King of Loba for making that for him. As we've said before, promo videos really help the uptake of a mod. Um, yes, yeah. definitely. <laughs> I'm, I'm... I, if there's one, oh my there's God, one though, thing I just about saw that. Yes, yes. There's, that's one thing, though. Like, I'm not being funny, but if I was to play in the mask again, ever, probably, hopefully soon, and I'm in one of the dark caverns, the one dark caves, and I see that fucking thing running towards me, I am all air flying oh. so hard. <laughs> Imagine shit. being in one of the underground bunkers and only having a torch and seeing that come around a corner. <laughs> oh my dear fucking lord not even like a torch on a helmet or like you're good but what was, the, what was the movement like? like i seriously have not watched it i don't want to watch it spiders creep me the fuck out with the legs it was moving like a spider isn't yes. that yes so it's completely yes. custom it's... animation oh mm -hmm. <laughs> uh johnny bravo no i am not doing a 24 hour normal stream again fuck off <laughs> Not a chance. You have to pay me to do that again because I, I was so ill. <laughs> I did. I did send a message to my mate Spud, um, who's one of the admins on the team as well, um, and I said you need to add that to my favourite server uh, because one of the beautiful things about Daisy is those jump scares, those frights you get. Um, and I swear to God, if that was on a server and I didn't know it was there, and that came at me, I would probably fucking log off there and then. <laughs> oh, just, my heart would be in my chest i'm literally one of those people I, I can be going through the old guinness book of records when it was in a book form and you get to the spider section and i'm like oh my god turn the page look away oh i hate fucking just i hate spiders with a passion I, my missus has to kill spiders in the house <laughs> oh, the, the, the worst thing i've ever seen was when we were living in um, north queensland we had a wolf spider um on the back patio it was a big one you know probably around about that size um right and i've seen and i've freaked out but i'm, I'm just kind of you know that morbid curiosity of like oh my god and the missus goes over to she's not scared of him um and she <laughs> whacks it with a thong and it was it was a mother and it was carrying babies on its back some spiders do that and it was just this sea of little hundreds of little spiders crawling up and i'm like, oh my fucking god i'm out uh just it was <laughs> oh dear lord it just yeah <laughs> oh, oh. No, nah, man, I'll take snakes any day over a spider. I'll take snakes any day over mm. a spider. Snakes, I've got to help you Johnny respect Bravo. of, but oh, my God. Ugh. Johnny Bravo 2014 says, how much will it take? You'd have to pay me at least, like, a grand to do another 24-hour normal stream. Like, I'm not fucking doing that shit again. It was a shit bet. Why the fuck did I make it in the first place? <laughs> But holy shit, no. Uh, no. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something um, which I'm going to regret doing. Uh, no, no. <laughs> no. Oh, dear Lord. <laughs> That's a big one. Oh, that mighty fella oh, is a beauty. That's actually eating a bird. <laughs> Fuck a beauty. But yeah. <laughs> it's, the, it's the only creature I've, I ever saw Steve Irwin nervous with. 
was he had, he had a bird eating spider on a piece of bark and his hand was visibly shaky. And if that is enough to make fucking Steve Irwin fucking scared, then there's a fucking reason why I'm scared. The motherfucker would be like, he didn't, he didn't care about snakes, but a spider? Nah. 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 Yeah. Ugh. Hate spiders. Hate them with a passion. Okay, moving on. Let's get away from this topic. <laughs> Um, the next one I wanted to showcase is another creature. What? Where? Where? Where did it go? Where did? Did I use the wrong link? Um. Okay, must be in this. Uh, the birds. Yeah. What? Yes. I thought the. Why is the link not working for me? Oh, well, you won't have to deal with <laughs> these problems. You can have a more I, professional uh, show moving forward, folks. I'll, uh, I'll share. I'll share. Don't worry. I'll okay. share. Okay. I'll turn mine off. How cool is that? How cool is that? Bird. It's a bird, a cool bird. Just be able to shoot a bird out of the sky, and I'm imagining you could probably cut it up and eat it and things like that. Um, I'd love it if it was, you know, something that was on the ground and flew up into the air when a player ran by and things like that, because, you know, I've, I've mm. many, you can, uh, can you eat them, uh, Greedy Peasants asking? I'm not sure. I'm going to guess you can. Um, I've always felt that the chicken got gypped, you know, you, you kill a chicken in the game and all you get is two breasts. Man, I, I don't yeah. like chicken breasts. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a thigh and leg man. Um, mm, I like the wings. Oh, you're a weirdo. <laughs> I wasn't that already established like months ago. <laughs> yeah. Oh, look, there he is in chat. Prestige. We showed um, people um, your um, EpiPens yeah, and, um, and the Toxic oh. Cure and that earlier, mate. Just amazing. Link them to the video. So hopefully a few people go over and watch it, mate. Um, don't be surprised if you get a few DMs from people, you know, maybe some cash under the table. Um, you know, <laughs> We're not saying uh, that you know you could do that, but you know, what, what? Quick. How much do you want? Lo lo lovely weather we're having. Yeah, yeah. Hey, take my money. They look take my money. awesome, dude. Fuck you, greedy peasant. We are not eating spiders. Oh, I could think of. Oh, oh what's the spider? Protein. Nah, <laughs> I'll eat grass before I eat a fucking spider. <laughs> yeah, the yeah. birds, they give me like a um, Red Dead 2 vibe. Like how you can kill the birds mm. in the sky and hunt yep. them and uh, yes. skin them and stuff. Yeah. Um, our boy Dumpgra <laughs> is making some changes to his um, Am I Making mod? That he is. Speak of the devil. He just said, thinking all those baby spiders as little snacks. <laughs> 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 I love this uh, mod. The cast this the is fantastic. <laughs> Hello, folks. As many of you know, I am the creator of the Ammo Making Mod, and I have been working on an update for my mod uh, called the Casting Rework. The Casting Rework will be re um, removing a bunch of recipes, over 70 recipes, in fact, many of them ranging from the creation of the ammo inside the molds themselves all the way to the filling and even the creation of the casting the tips thing. This is an amazing feat. However, my mod has been on the workshop for two and a half years, and many of the server owners and fellow modders have reached out to me wanting to make my mod compatible with their servers or their mods. This change should affect very few people who haven't altered my recipes from the get-go and might have to remove the modded recipes from their mods. I am making this video to let you all know that within the next week, I'm going to be pushing the update and that you should all start preparing to remove any altercations that you've done to my mod regarding these following recipes. 
anything that fills up a crucible with ammo that is a modded version of my recipe. Anything that adds to that filled tips or casings crucible. Anything that creates ammo or changes how ammo is created by the casings or tips when pouring into the mold recipes. These are all very important things to take into consideration when you are looking at your servers. Try to be aware that when I push this update and your server breaks, I've been giving you notice and this video is about that notice. I hope everyone's looking forward to my update and I am very, very excited to see where this goes in the future. Thank you very much. And again, this was a warning for you to go through your mod packs or your mods and try to find stuff. I will be adding a predefined inside of my mod so it can be easier mod compatibility in the future. Thank you very much. So good to see a public notice like that, letting people know of an impending mm -hmm. change. Um, and yes. yeah, simplifying it down from 70 plus recipes to six actions. That's... It's so, it's so optimized that way and absolute props to the blog for doing it. Absolute props. And, you know, going back to uh, what we discussed earlier on, Falcon, you know, of the process that you're going through with updating on the particular day and time. People mm -hmm. who give notice out to... Um, the the server owners and players on what the next update will do and how it'll affect you it's something that really needs to be done a lot more so it's it's great to see that Dumgrad took the initiative to do that so props to him I'm, I am wondering though what the reception for this new update was Dump did you have you had any reports about it I'd love for you to let us know in the chat in regards to that, because mm. obviously with such a major change, you can always you can always assume there'll be people like, oh, my server's broke or whatever. But, you know, with that notice given, I'd like to think that no reports have been super smooth. Well, there you go. It worked out well for you. Fucking nice. Even made a tutorial. Even better. See, that's what I fucking love. Sorry for swearing so much, but it's what I really, really love about the modding community. It's just getting so much better in letting people know on how to do these things and give them notice about future updates. It's so, so cool. Mm. And transparency, exactly. Yeah, one of the things so, I love about the modern the community do it. is just what? I keep from finding out about people I had no idea existed, like Mighty Mordsbert. Mm. MMG Base Storage. Now, our mate um, Marx did a video on this. I was and just about to say, yes, he did. It was, it blew me, it blew me away. The, the quality of some of these items and it's pretty like so there's there's some stuff in there that you know it, it's militaristic and uh, all the rest of it but he's got some items that just are, like the craftable gun rack now that looks a lot like um uh one that mass made it's similar but it's not the same one yeah but such a great Re concept. Like, overall, yeah, the overall, mm. I, I've, I've already linked the video that Mark's done in the chat, so if anybody mm. wants an in-depth look, then they can go ahead and take a look there. But it's just... really, really cool. Um, it's really, really cool that, you know, these kind of mods are coming out. And as Mark said in the video, it actually looks, you know, like it could be a part of Vanilla DayZ, which is something a lot mm. of mods... <sighs> It's kind Falls of down somewhat... on them. They don't really yeah, try don't to really... do that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So... There's like the futuristic or like the heavy militaristic items. There's never really yes. like the official feel to it. And mm -hmm. yeah. it's nice to see that because like we were saying earlier with like the um, ultralights and the gyrocopters and stuff, it's nice to have that other option. As yes. There's, there's some servers that want to have these military items. They want to have like the highly futuristic looking like um call of duty exosuit yeah. type stuff but and if they want that they want that but uh, but to have that also side where it appeals to the niche community too that wants to have like official or vanilla or that realistic feel it's nice to have like two options you know in that sense mm -hmm. completely agree it's uh, <clears throat> having stuff that looks like you just went to cabela's or whatever that your local uh fishing and camping store is yeah as opposed to things that look like they were kind of cobbled together with what, whatever was laying yep. around. Yep. And yeah, that, that, that going back to what I have with the real stories, that was what I wanted is, you know, items that look like they're, you know, even with this, um, I wanted uh, the gun rack to look like it was made out of the plank texture from the game. Um, mm -hmm. That, you know, if something involves sheet metal, then it should, you know, have that corrugated look like the sheet metal does. 
um, you know, make it look like it's uh, made out of the items that are in the game already. Um, the other thing mm. with this as well is um, uh, it looks like there's no videos here. Um, so we'll uh, jump over to Marx's video. Um, <clears throat> but the other thing that uh, kind of blew me away was um, you know, the, the, the level of um, detail in just the animations of it. Yes, the, the, were, the animations for this mod was really, really well done, and the safe was, was quite funny to me. Was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> that one locker was really nice, how the actual um, the handle swivel, slid. and you can pull yes. it out like, oh. It's just, mm. Yeah, I love like those Like had makeshift items, they bring an apocalyptic feel to the game. <laughs> yeah, every time you open the safe, it plays that sound effect. Yeah, it's, you know, I, I hope that's something you could turn off if you didn't want it, but uh, you know, yes. it'll probably get annoying after a while. Uh, but I, I was genuinely, did Mark set that in? And then it just kept it doing it. I was like, no, it's actually yes, working. Yes, I was kind of thinking he... Yeah, I, th I genuinely thought that's he edited funny. it in at first, and then... Yeah, Again, that, the, the, hinges, metal the hinges place. lift. was a fair number of slots. And another gun locker. The handle turns, oh, the, the handle gate slides across. Yeah. yeah. It's just, you know, all of the cases, the handles turn on them and hinges lift mm. and things like that. It's just, it's great to see. I don't know what effect that mm. would have on servers, um, but it, it's, it it's, it's, it's awesome to see that level of detail put into something. You know, you, you mm -hmm. know you're leaning more towards a quality mod when they're putting that much attention to detail um, into the little things of it that just make it look so much better. Well, one thing I like to talk about too with that is they had stuff that looked like in the mod that looked like it would spawn in Ash. Like they had the dumpsters and they had like the garbage cans. And what was really cool is there was a feature where if you went into the dumpster, you could actually destroy all the items inside of it, like clear out the trash. A, a lot of so if you um, had... storage mods have had that. Mm -hmm. I know Helkiana's um, had a um, trash um, bin as well, and uh, it's just a wheelie bin, and you could do that. So, mm -hmm. yeah, th that's been around for a while, but it's a cool function, and it's great when they have one of those in a trader location because so many people just go to traders and just dump shit everywhere when there's a bin there where you can go to and just delete the items. And it's good to be able to have one in your base as well. Um, so that you don't just have to dump stuff on the ground and you know, add even more lag to your base area, and it's great to be able to delete them. Mm -hmm. Good little mod. Really, really good little mod. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, we are drawing to a close. Um, I wanted to take this time to just do one final um, address to you all. Um, uh, give me one sec. Stop streaming. Um, I'm going to make myself big for this. So I just want to say I've really, really enjoyed um, the last two years of doing the Daisy podcast. Um, <clears throat> you know, I would love it if it was bigger, but I still love the fact that you know each and every week there are 30 to 40 to 50 people who tune in um, and hundreds more who watch the VODs when we upload them um, to uh, the channel. Now, I know I haven't uploaded the last few weeks, but I've had a reason, and the reason is Lad is going to be taking a few weeks off to get himself all set up. We're going to make sure he's got access to everything he needs to have access and all the rest of it. So episode 100, 101, and 102 will be released over the next few weeks, so you can still get your fix of the DayZ podcast uh, in that time what i really want to do is thank each and every one of you to the team who worked with me over the years um yeah we had val and um uh, on uh, the other week as well for episode 100 um but there's been wee devil brim god bless you mate i hope um things are okay with you um archie um the one um yeah we got to meet the one um i met him for the first time on episode one um, and found out the story of how 420 gaming, which was, you know, <laughs> it just, it was, it was, it was an amazing moment. That first episode, I was nervous as fuck. Um, and then someone in chat is involved in one of the most, uh, you know, infamous, um, chapters of Daisy's history with the, um, 
uh, old 420 gaming servers and uh, yes, uh, BO4, I've said I will come back from time to time. You know, Lad may need to uh, be away, so um, I'll be happy to fill in for him um, whenever needs be. Um, and, you know, if they, I've already said Mario uh, when the um, animation tools um, are, done, are completed and being released publicly, we're getting him on. Uh, and I will be there for that episode because, you know, the, that is just, it's just such a groundbreaking. We're seeing examples of it already, like with the Spiders mod. And we've, you know, there, there's certain mods out there where he's worked with those people to implement custom animations to make their mod better. So we're already seeing um, the, the, the fruits of that amazing mod. Mm -hmm. And I still say it's probably the most groundbreaking thing to happen to DayZ. Um, but yeah. Um, I miss you already. I, I'm going to miss you guys as well. Um, but I'm not gone. Um, I'm moving on to another project. Uh, and I would like to announce now um, that I have my first guest lined up for a one-to-one -one spotlight interview, which will be done live on my uh, on this channel. Um, but it's not going to be at a regular set schedule. There's going to be no you know you can catch me. I'll advertise them. Um, I'll work out a time. So if you're available and you're free, we can fit it in. Um, but the first uh, spotlight interview is going to be with someone we talked about today, Dinos Binos. Nice. I, <laughs> Dinos. I'm, I'm fascinated by the guy. Um, yeah, hoping to maybe get some insights of what it was like to work with Frankie um, and just everything that he's done um, in the community. But, you know, I kind of just got myself sidetracked, which I do a lot, but I just want to thank each and every one of you who's tuned in, you know, whether you've donated or whether you've anything. Hang about. <laughs> Go, on. Go on. Go on. Go on, Ike. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw him sitting in the green room. So he's, he's obviously going to tear, tear me down here. Um, can't hear you, Ike, if you're talking, mate. Um, check your mic settings, you boomer. Um, but while we wait for unless, Ike to sort himself this is, out. this is the troll that he's doing, where he's just, yeah. he's just there. He's just... <laughs> but yeah, I, I can't thank you all enough. Um, you know, to everyone who's... Um, you know, subscribed on Patreon, whether you're still a Patreon or not, um, whether you've donated, you know, um, a dollar, um, subscribe to my other channel, um, you know, when I had Twitch um, uh, affiliate status on it and that. It, it means the fucking world to me that some people, we just saw you light up. Hey. For a second. There we go. <laughs> go on, get it over and done with. Hey. <laughs> no, I, I, I just wanted to say I tease because I love you. And I really do. You, and I'm sorry you... to hear that you're dying. It's We're going to miss you. <laughs> you are very old, so it's expected. I mean, this is the end of life for you, so we're all very sad. Just let us know beforehand where we should send flowers. I will. I will. <laughs> I will. Oh, God. But no, this, this is not a mourning. This is a celebration. Celebration of all things, boy. It's been a pleasure. It's been a lot of fun listening to you, boy. It, it, it really it's, is. It, it's been it's been awesome doing this each and every week. But I, I kind of want to elaborate, and this goes into um, something. I received a message from someone who said that they they've had a bit of a feel that the vibe of the podcast has been, you know, we're getting a bit negative of late. Um, I'm getting a bit critical, and I I kind of have to agree. That's what happens when you get old. <laughs> it's called becoming a curmudgeon a curmudgeon i know that word i know that word but yeah it's it's yeah it, ha it has a little bit not a lot but it has a little bit and that's partly part of the reason why i think it's time for me to step aside and let some fresh blood take over and you know if i if i have um i apologize because I love this game. I fucking love DayZ, man. I, I, I live and breathe this game. There's barely a week goes past where I'm not wearing something DayZ related. You know, I'll wear my DayZ cap out when I go to the shops. I'll wear my you know, DayZ podcast um, shirt. Um, 
you know, um, I, I just, I fucking love it. But I also, I, I want to start covering some other stuff as well. So the spotlight is not just going to be DayZ stuff. I'm going to be looking at other games. I want to reach out to the guy behind Road to Bostock. I'm quite fascinated by that. Um, I want to you know, cover Scum in a bit more detail. Um, they've got planes in Scum now, um, which I'm kind of on the fence about, to be honest. Um, you know, it's it's ruined the whole mechanic of bases um, where people can just, you know, jump in a plane and parachute in, inside someone's base now and get past all the walls. So it's it's mm. a it's it's an iffy thing. Um, but there's so many other games out there in the survival genre, um, and I want to start expanding 87.8 Survivor FM to cover more of that. Um, yes. But I want the Daisy podcast to still keep on going uh, because, like, like I said, you know, um, it's the stupidest time ever. We're growing at the fastest rate ever. Um, I showed the subscriber count just the other day and how it's on a sharp uptick at the moment. Uh, so we're not getting rid of it. It's not going anywhere. We're going to take some time. It's probably going to come back with a new look. Um, have you settled on a time yet? Not quite yet, no, but I will say that, like we've just said before, it's going to be most likely towards the end of the month. I'm going to get Easter over and done with. Uh, there's some stuff going on in my personal life that needs to take, um, that needs to be the forefront of my attention. So, uh, But we're also setting things up. Like Boydie said, there's going to be a new look. There is going to be a new time. There's going to be a new format um, with it as well. Um, you know, I if there's something I want you guys to keep me, I want you guys to keep me online, um, on the line. And I want you guys to keep me updated of how you guys are, you know, with your feel of the show. I want feedback. I want to know if I'm doing a good job. Um, you know, if there's anything you want changed or if there's anything that you feel critical of about the new, um, well, anything new that's coming, please do let me know. If there's something. Bring back I'm, Boydie. <laughs> <laughs> already <laughs> fucking hell shit i didn't realize it was gonna be that shit <laughs> but I, I i do want you guys to be he'll keep me accountable if there's something that i'm really passionate about is keeping the show going i want to keep the show going for as long as i possibly can i'm dedicated about the game i'm dedicated about the podcast and the team and what we strive to do and the message that we try to convey to everybody so i Boydie, I've said this before, but I've got a love, a lot of love and respect for you. And thank you so much for the past few years that you've dedicated towards this community. And we love you. And we are going to miss you, but you'll always be around. I will. I'll, I'll still be jumping into the Discord um, on a Monday morning um, and we'll talk about you know, the podcast that just happened and things like that. Uh, I'm not going. I'm just not going to be on the Daisy podcast yeah. regularly. Um, you know, maybe a few times a year, um, I'll make a special, you know, guest appearance, come back, be a, maybe even be a guest, who knows? Uh, but yeah, I a hundred percent agree. Luke, the podcast is in good hands with lad and I cannot wait to see what lad and lemons and Archie come up with for the future. Uh, because part of the, um, rescheduling time is, you know, as you can see, Archie hasn't been able to make the last three weeks. Um, he's, he's at classes today. Um, so we're moving the uh, time, um, you know, Archie brings a, a, a great dynamic to the show. He's he got does. a great sense of humour. Um, you know, that, that's why we have Ike around. He's got a great sense of humour as well, even if it is all targeted at me. Uh, but, <laughs> yeah, if you, if you follow us too on Twitter, we get I give as good as I get, and he gives as good as he gets as well. We just love doing yes. it. We, it's, we, yeah. I don't. I think some people don't know. Uh, I, I even had my son turn around and go, "Who's this fucking Ike guy having a go at you?" And I said, "Don't worry, don't worry, it's all cool." <laughs> Me and Ike just have we have this awesome. We we get each other. I don't think other people get it, and it probably makes me a few enemies as well. But I don't care because I fucking I love having that. Uh, uh, what what would you call it, Ike? You're a words man. Awesome. It's awesome. It's fucking <laughs> awesome. I like. He, he did a tweet the other day. Uh, oh, God, what was it again? You have to be an idiot if you need an e edith um, button um, on Twitter. Um, and it was just <laughs> simple, silly little humor like that. Um, oh, T Dog. I have seen that clip of I Show Speed. You know what? We're, we're, we're going to hang around, Ike, as well. Uh, but I'm going to quickly cover that. I, I put out a series of tweets. 
So, yeah, banter. That's the word I was looking for, Luke. There's a lot of banter between yes. me and Ike. But, yeah, so I show speed. For those that don't know, um, he's a young streamer. I think he's 17 years old. Uh, and a clip is circulating at the moment that everyone is talking about of him being very fucking toxic and abusive in chat. Now, what he what, there's all, there's also another clip, and I've got a series of tweets on my Boyd73 account where I actually addressed it and I talked about it, gave my opinion. Um, everyone knows what I'm like. I believe young people make mistakes. Should he be held accountable? Fucking hope he should. Um, should he be cancelled and banned from... He's already banned from Twitch for what he did um, some time back, which was basically, um, uh, I'll say the word, uh, rape threats um, to a female live in a um, in a string. Um, and he was banned from Twitch, and I kind of think rightfully so. Uh, but should he be banned forever? No. We all learn from our mistakes. When you're 17, you know, th put yourself in his shoes. This is a 17-year-old boy who has blown up, like absolutely blown up. He has thousands of people watching him every time he streams. Um, uh, Dumpgrat, the, the tweet is um, on my uh, Boydy73 Twitter. Um, it's about eight or nine different tweets, and I link to all of the videos involved with timestamps of where you go to check it out. And he's 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 clearly he's an edge lord, edgy humor. I love edgy humor. If you follow me on my private, uh, well, not private, but my boy D seventy three Twitter, I love good dark humor. Um, yeah, you know, I've got no issue with it. But there's a line, and when you're young, you don't know what the line is. All he's thinking is, you know, money, um, and my 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 crowd love me to be like this, so I'm going to be like this, and. He probably doesn't have, uh, again, you know, this is the casual nature of being a streamer, of being an influencer. A lot of these people, they don't have a manager. They don't have a mature, you know, respectable person like Ike behind them telling them to uh, what's appropriate and what's not. You'd do that, Fuck yeah. You? Yeah. So he's doing shit that he thinks is funny without taking into consideration the consequences of what it is. Do I believe he's sexist? No, I think he just likes to say stuff because he gets a rise. There's a difference between um, being being an ist and being someone who's just trying to get a rise out of people. You know, everyone likes to call people racist these days. A lot of people aren't racist. Uh, most people aren't racist. Your true racists are just, yeah. Now, the uh, point that Dump Guard's making is something I actually address as well. Um, a lot of people um, now, now see again. I don't think he was being truly. I don't, okay, he was being sexist, but I don't think he is sexist. I think you could. Does, it, does that make sense? Does anyone, does anyone understand? Yeah, you know, he was saying something to offend. Is where I'm trying to get at. Um, yeah, you know, I think if he's a mother, if he's got a mum in his life, I don't know um, if she. Uh, saw that clip, she'd probably give him a clip around the ear if she's a decent sort of person. Um, but, you know, like like a lot of young people, you do and say stupid shit and you just don't consider the consequences. You do it to get a rise out of people. You do it to offend them. Um, you know, he told this chick who was trying to tell him to calm down to go and do her husband's dishes or something like that. It was, it was fucking shit. He, he, he shouldn't have said it. He shouldn't have said it in any way, shape or form. I'm not condoning it, but should he be cancelled, banned forever? No. And this comes back to an issue I have with some of these platforms. Uh, you, you look at an NFL team, for example. Um, like you're American, aren't you? Something like that, yeah. Yep. Um, and so are you, Lemons, <laughs> and so are you, Falcon. Um, those guys have, you know, because a lot of those young guys, they're like, what, 18, 19, 20, 21, when they get signed into these million dollar contracts. They actually have yeah, it, people employed to provide guidance to these young fellas. It's not quite the same um, uh, as with a streamer, but you know these people are there, and yeah, we see the behaviour of these people, and they've got it. Young people make mistakes, and I'm not saying he shouldn't be held uh, accountable, Dumpgrat. But the issue we have is with platforms like Twitch. Now, how many people have been banned? 
and not known what the actual incident is. In his case, they do. But the feedback and the appeals process is absolutely terrible, both on YouTube and Twitch, not just Twitch. This is an anti-Twitch thing. So what's the recourse here? Um, you know, how does he prove that he's changed? Um, it's it's just it's so fucking complicated. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I think um, I think we should just I think we should leave that topic there and for a discussion for another time. I think because yeah. it's a very very touchy subject. There's a lot of you do need to think before you speak, it, though. But... You do need to think before you speak. But young people are notorious for not thinking. Um, so yeah, but I, I, I've got, I've been quite public on it and. Yeah, it, it was mentioned, and it was it, it was sad to see. And I hope to God someone grabs him and pulls him into line, um, and explains to him the consequences of just a few moments of stupidity, um, and what that will actually do to him uh, in the long term. You know, I hope he made enough bank to be able to survive the next few years that he's probably going to be offline. I don't imagine it's going to be long before he's banned on YouTube as well. So, and I understand why, understand why. Um, but yeah. Um, back to me leaving. Um, I, I can't thank you all enough for the past couple of years. You know, and even today is actually um, the anniversary of the first time I ever streamed on Twitch as well, uh, back on the Void oh, 73 shit. account. So <clears throat> I think that was 2014 or 2015. I can't remember. I'm old. Um, so <laughs> I think we've established that. <laughs> yeah, I just I cannot thank you all enough. Um, you know, so many of you are just, you've become friends to me. Um, and that's why I go and sit in the Discord. Um, and, you know, if you ever see me sitting there, even if I'm on my own, um, don't be afraid to just drop in. That's why I jump in there. It's why Lad jumps in there. It's why Marks would jump in there. It's why Dumpgrad jumps in there. You know, we, we, we want to be approachable. You know, for anyone to just come in and talk, um, Boy, he's leaving because he's going to jail. Tell your friends. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I haven't done that. Oh, actually, I, I lie. I've been in a military jail. Um, I spent uh, 14, boy. 14 days. That's a long story. That's a, that's a cool story. Maybe one day. Maybe one day. Maybe one day I'll tell that uh, story of why I was sent to the military jail. It's a cool story as well. <laughs> it's I did something that if I that if when I tell you guys you're going to be what the actual fuck, and you only went <laughs> to jail for fourteen days, yeah, and you weren't kicked out of the army. This yeah, I'll give you one clue. It was pre nine eleven. Um. So yeah. So, <clears throat> but yeah. Oh, derailing my train of thought. Um. Thank you all. Thank you, everyone, for the support for this show. Um, all of our patrons, all of our donators. <coughs> you know, even you know the likes of you, Ike, who donated to the Christmas show. Um, altruism. Yeah, you know, we we want to give back. Um, you know, we we have donation links, but we have donation links so that we can do stuff to give back to the community. You know, we uh, are patrons of a number of amazing modders out there who deserve so many more mods. Uh, or so many more uh, donations than that. Uh, but it's good to see, you know, the, uh, you go into uh, Red Falcon's Discord, for example, uh, and he's very public about the uh, donations he re um, receives. Um, he's not hiding it. Um, he's got a channel dedicated to it, which shows um, who, who's donated and how much they're donating. Um, so, yeah, you know... Keep keep doing that, people. Keep supporting these. Support your favorite streamers and all the rest of it. But you know, hashtag adopt the modder. Hashtag adopt the modder. <laughs> I'm never gonna stop. That's you know. Yeah. Love you all, and I'm gonna miss you all. I really, really fucking am. Um, but I'm also gonna enjoy sleeping in on a Sunday morning because and why do you reckon yes. that is, Ike? Why do you reckon I'm gonna enjoy sleeping in? Because you're fucking old. <laughs> uh, Dr. Mutter. <laughs> but no, <laughs> um, I've had so many amazing guests, so many highlights. You know, um, it seems every single week I'm, all, I'm always leaving and chatting with the, the boys afterwards and going, I think that was one of the best episodes ever, best guests ever, and all the rest of it. So, yeah, I, I want to keep this show going because this isn't my show. Well, it is, but... This is a show I created 
for you all, for everyone to enjoy and find out, you know, the, the stuff that, you know, we still find stuff out, you know. One person here had heard of the pipe bomb mod, um, the and the rest of us were all like, "Wow, I, I didn't know about that." And that's for twenty twenty one last year, you know. And we we rely on you guys to keep us updated as well, um, because we're we're only a small team. Um, if you find out about something cool, you know, most of the information we find is in um, from our Discord, uh, from people sharing it in. Um, uh, the modders discord uh, or the uh, daisy mods channel in the um, uh, 87.8 survivor fm discord um, yeah just saw something cool fucking awesome um, yeah and we scour twitter tag us if you see something cool on twitter uh, just yeah thank you all thank you all for the last two years um, and you know I didn't think um, we would make it this long, but it's time for me to move on. Um, I, I offend some people. There are people who have blocked me, big names, um, because I say stupid shit and do stupid things and, you know, um, say stuff that doesn't need to be said. And, yeah, so hopefully with some new people in the show, um, we can, you know, get a better uh, connection with everyone um, <clears throat> in the whole community. Um, because, you know, that, that's my vision of the Daisy podcast is that it's like a hub for the whole community. Um, yes. Yeah. Love you all. Love you all so, so much. Thank you all. We love you as well. Mm. Well, I have to dip out, guys, but I just want to say uh, all the teasing us out of love, Boydy. Wish you the best. And uh, it's unfortunate that you are not going away forever. But... Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I do look forward to harassing you even more, and yeah, we'll have to figure out how to harass Lad. So, oh. hi. <laughs> he's easy. He's a, he's an easy target. I think he's even easier than me. Ooh, the dwarf, the iron, the iron brew dwarf, the iron brew dwarf. I like that. I like that. <laughs> Luke, thank you so much for the donation, mate. I really do appreciate it. We'll find a good use for that. Thank you so so much, um, Ike. Don't be a stranger, mate. <clears throat> and keep being you. Never change. Never change. Follow Ike on Twitter, ladies and gentlemen. He's he's worth every follow. Yeah. All right, guys. Have a great night. You too, buddy. Enjoy okay, your smoking hot um, engineer girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> give her give her a kiss from me. <laughs> oh fucking hell! <laughs> but yes, it's thank you. Thank you, Boydie, for giving me the opportunity to to keep go the dream alive. the podcast. Yep. Hell, well, that's it, yeah. Keeping it alive, keeping the dream alive. And like I said, I really do hope that everybody continues to watch. And I'm really, really looking forward to to speaking with you all, to, to get more people on, to get guests on, to learn more about the community and what you guys have been doing and just being there for you. So, again, thank you, Boydie. And thank you for everything that you've done for us. And I'll be in the hangout every week as normal, mate. And you know, mm -hmm. I, I want people to come in and talk. Um, you know, we're probably going to make a few changes to the uh, Discord yet again. Um, but um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll work things out. We'll work things out. If you've got ideas, let us know, folks. Um, and keep on giving us feedback. Red Falcon, thank you so, so much for coming on, mate. It was a pleasure. Oh. Um, and I was glad I was able to extend it by an extra two weeks, mate, because, yeah, I, I did really want to cover this one. Uh, um, your, your mod is amazing, mate. Please keep doing what you're doing. We need more people like you in the community. Like, there's, 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 there's a number of them already, but the more people with that altruistic nature, um, the better for all Daisy and modding in general. Yeah, th thank you, Boydy, for for having me on. It seems like uh, kind of since the mod came out, I've been on just about every podcast since then, yeah. uh, in one way or another, peeping in. But uh, I was glad I was able to get on, uh, you know, as a as a guest uh, while you're still hosting, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, very excited to to see uh, what direction Lad goes, yep. uh, what stupid shit he manages to say, and what new uh, <laughs> groups of people he manages to offend. It's very exciting. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> oh, it's going to be fun.
Project hey, Lemons, welcome aboard, my man. Thank you so much, man. I'm glad to be here, and thank you for the opportunity, you know? <laughs> yeah. No, look, mate, when, 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 like I said the other week, or last week, um, when, when we were uh, chatting with you, um, or when I was chatting with you, you just you ticked mm. every box of what Lad and I had said we need for our third co-host, and that is that console focus and you you brought that tonight it was predominantly a pc uh focused um episode but you were able to provide mm -hmm. the context of some of the points we brought up um for the console stuff and that's what we've been needing to help expand the show um, and get more mm -hmm. information out there and get more people from the console community to go and buy a gaming pc and play with us in the super elite master race <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all so, so much. Uh, when do you expect uh, to be um, back again, Vlad? Um, I don't have a confirmed date or time, but like I said, towards the end of the month, once the less, once Easter's done with and stuff that's going on in my personal life, that needs to take, um, I need to bring attention to. So once that's all sorted out, I will announce it in the podcast when the uh -huh. 100 and third episode is coming and i i'm really looking forward to all you guys watching and hopefully i continue to do the show justice so again you will mate i have 110 percent confidence in you and the rest of the team hell yes <laughs> awesome <laughs> ladies and gentlemen i bid you adieu for the last time as host of the daisy podcast <laughs> no more staring at my ugly face so yeah oh, oh, but i'll be back every now and then folks so it's not the last time ever yes, but definitely yeah all the best everyone and we will see you when we see you oh <laughs> take care everyone cheers everybody take care. Take care. easy <laughs>